Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have a mega video for you full of all of my 2024 spring and Easter DIYs. It's going to be so much fun. I hope you guys really enjoy these. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like any of today's projects, leave me a thumbs up, but let's go see these DIYs. I found this darling pick at Hobby Lobby. There's actually two picks here and I'll show you kind of what I mean by that in a minute. But I also have this little tin from Dollar Tree. This is the cutest little tin. It's just this plain silver and it has this darling little handle. It's bigger than the tins in the wedding section yet smaller than kind of their normal seasonal tins. And last year I purchased some Easter graphics that look like these like vintage Easter labels on Etsy. I'll leave the link to the store in my description box, but I just printed them out with my inkjet printer on just sticker paper that I picked up at the craft store. And I'm just going to cut one of these out because I thought it would be rather plain to leave the bucket, the little pail, like it's plain color. And I really wanted to have something else on here to kind of make it definitely Easter. When I cut this out, since it is white paper and it had a black edge on it, I didn't want you to see any of the white from the like little shavings when you cut it. So I'm just taking my Sharpie and going around all of the edges just to make sure that it looks completely black and, and uniform all the way around. So since it is a sticker, you just peel it from the back of the paper and just line it up on your pail where you want it to be. Just keep in mind like where the handle is and everything to as far as where you want your design to be laid. And I mean, you could definitely leave this plain or you could paint it or do something like that. You don't have to do one of the little stickers. A rub-on transfer would be really cute as well. I just really loved those vintage labels. Now I'm just taking some styrofoam here and I'm just placing my pail on it and going around with my putty knife just to kind of cut out where I need the shape to be. It's not really rocket science when you do this. I mean, even if you just had a square piece and you kind of just cut the corners off or shoved it down in anything that you want to do. I will say before I stick this in, I should have placed some little marbles or glass beads or something in the base of it to make the bottom a little more heavy. It's not going to tip over or anything, but you definitely, when you pick it up, can feel that there's not a lot of like weight to it. And so I would recommend doing that. See right here, I should have done this before I put this styrofoam in right here, but I mean, it still works out okay. Just learn from my my advice, I guess. So anyhow, I stick that styrofoam in and get it pushed down. You want it to be just a little bit below the lip of the pail. And then I'm sticking this pick in and I'm realizing I don't love the height of it. So I'm just going to cut it down here and I'm just using my little pliers here, my little cutters, snippers, whatever you want to call them. But I just kind of cut it down to where I think and then place that in to make sure that I have it the height that I want it. I just really thought this was so fun and Eastery, but it needed a little something extra. So I found this pick as well, just in the floral section. And it had these, I don't even know what this is. So if you know what this is, let me know. And maybe it said, and I just forgot to look. I just really like the look of these little fluffy little flowers that are all on here. I'm not, I'm not really even sure how to describe them, but I do just want to show just a moment these cutters that I have that are so great to work with thicker wires here. You can kind of see where the tension is on those. I get asked about these all the time and I just pick them up at my uh, hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot, but they work really well, especially if you don't have a lot of strength in your hands to use just like traditional pliers, they work wonders. Now I stick these little pieces of this other pick that I have in here and I felt like that just kind of added a little more fullness. I really like the texture that it added and that little pop of yellow. I know that it had a little bit of yellow already in there but it really just kind of makes it look a little more happy in my opinion. But I want these to fit on here well and not fall off and so I'm just going to kind of make a space in the pick to glue them with a little hot glue. You can kind of see here I'm going to bend down some of these little berries that are on here and I have that other pick in there with those little yellow flowers. And I just do a little bit of hot glue. Now this does take just a minute because you want to hold it in place until that hot glue dr like dries mostly all the way. So I'm just going to sit there and hold that with my fingers, pinch it. If you need to wear some finger protectors, definitely do that. And then I'll just bend those back up in place. And then to cover, since they had a little bit of a different color of um, they'd probably be fine to leave it like this, but the little stems were a different color. So I'm taking just some floral foam, or not floral foam, some floral tape, sorry. And I just got this off of the little piece that I cut off the end. I was able to just kind of snip that and unravel it. 
but any, you could cover the whole thing with a new type of floral tape, just so it matches. And this is just gonna give it a little more security, make it look a little bit more cohesive because I really do just like how this all looks together here with those extra little flowers in there. So I'm just going to place this down into um, the hole that I created in the styrofoam there and get it positioned the exact, the exact height that I want it to be. And then since we placed that styrofoam down just a little bit below the edge of the pail, I'm going to put some hot glue on that and I'm going to use just some grass or some moss here. Spanish moss would be really fun. This is just some like traditional like I don't even know what this moss is called. It's not reindeer moss, just, I just think it's like regular moss, I don't know, but it does shed a little bit. So you just wanna be careful in the area that you're using it because it does kind of get everywhere. I've heard some people say to spray some hairspray on it after you get it set so that way it creates less shedding. If you have any ideas or thoughts on that, definitely let me know down in the comments. But I really love the look of the green with this rather than the Spanish moss kind of has that grayish brownish tone it's cute it looks kind of like a nest or something but i really did love the way that this green popped with it and i had just a couple of little eggs that i took off of a little tree that i got from a thrift store that i kind of just use eggs here and there they have wires on them already so i just stuck the wires into the styrofoam but you could easily just take some little extra eggs that you have and just glue them down onto that grass if they don't have a wire in them and I just thought that kind of made it look really cute to have those little extra eggs on the pail there, kind of breaks up the solidness of the grass. What do you guys think of this for a little Easter floral uh, arrangement? I just think it's really pretty. I'm really pleased with how it came out and it does just scream spring and Easter. And it really wasn't that expensive and it really was such an easy project to put together. And I think it just is so cute. What do you guys think of this one? Let me know down in the comments. A little while back, I picked up this cute little house sign from Dollar Tree, and I thought it would be really fun to kind of turn it into a cute little Easter item. Now I have these little rub on transfers. You can pick them up at Dollar Tree. I got this from Essential Stencils, which I will link in my description, but even like IOD transfers, you can print on tissue paper, use a sticker. There's so many different options, but I thought it would be really fun to put this on here. It kind of has a postage stamp vibe to it, which I thought was really cute. After I rub the design on there, I am just putting a little bit of Mod Podge on it. This is going to help protect that transfer so that way it's not going to scuff or scratch or anything like that. And I'm just being careful to only keep it on the transfer because I didn't want anything to like give a different sheen to that chalkboard background that's there. Now this egg also came from Dollar Tree and I bought this with the sole purpose of trying to get this little tin bunny off of here. I thought he was just so cute. And I thought it would be so fun to do other projects with him. Plus then you have a giant egg shape for a different sign if you want. But you can see I'm just using my putty knife. Just go slow and take your time and it will come right off without bending. Just be patient with it. Now he was very shiny, which would be cute, but I kind of wanted to give him a like rusted look. So I started with some antiquing wax and I just kind of pounced that on. I used a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of Merlot. And I just kind of go all the way, like pounce back and forth between the different colors to kind of create a rust color. Now you'll have to tell me when this is done. I know the rust isn't everybody's cup of tea and I get that. So paint him white, that would be so cute. But I honestly feel like maybe not so much rusty that he looks like, but he looks like it's his little brown fur or maybe even like a chocolate bunny or something. But I think he turned out pretty cute, but it's just kind of a fun technique to go and kind of make it look like faux rust. But paint him however you want is gonna be darling even just to leave him the way that it is. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of boxwood that I'm just gluing back behind him, kind of peeking out. And then this is just a little lavender sprig that came off of one of those uh, really cute spring picks that Dollar Tree has. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the bottom there. And then I will just kind of hold that in place until it dries to create kind of the floral aspect of it. And I have this little package of nests and I believe I got them at Hobby Lobby and it came with like four in a pack and they're pretty small. And uh, I just am gluing that right on there and I'm gonna make some little eggs in just a minute to go in there. But I felt like it needed a little more color. So I have this, or just some leftover little fuzzy flowers that I had. I did a DIY with them um, a couple videos back and they were really cute, but it was kind of this beautiful orange and yellow colors on them. So I thought it would bring that little spring pop of color into this DIY. So 
it's fun. You can use just kind of your scrap little uh, florals that you have, little leftovers to kind of make this little vignette and kind of make it really fun and make it your own. Now I'm just taking some air dry clay and I'm just going to roll these into a little egg shape. And uh, if you can find some eggs that are small enough to go in here or put some different eggs, you don't wanna do this step, go for it. Even just like a cute little bird in there would be cute. I just wanted to have these little itty bitty eggs in there. I just thought that would be really fun. As I was making this DIY, I was kind of thinking that this is this cute little rabbit that's visiting his house of his friends, the birds, and maybe he's just watching over their little eggs while they're gone or something. I don't know. I just thought it was really kind of a fun little vignette to create here. Now I'm just doing a little bit of speckling on these eggs to add just a little bit of visual interest. You could leave them white. You could paint them fun colors like a robin's egg color uh, would be really pretty too. I just kind of liked the white on there. I felt like with the black background and where I had the color in the flowers that the white really kind of popped there and I liked that but I mean definitely make it your own uh, if you decide to recreate this because it's just I mean it's what's so fun about creating these is there's really no right or wrong it's what you like now I had a little bit of antiquing wax left in my brush so I just went over that wood uh, to kind of um, rustic it up a little bit it was kind of a little bit blonde if you will so I just kind of was making it tone it down a little bit now I did take a little bit of Spanish moss and tuck up in under any empty spaces that were at the bottom there so like under the uh, nest there kind of behind the bunny a little bit I felt like that really and then I just kind of trimmed it off I felt like that just kind of really closed in any gaps there but here's the completed piece and I think that this turned out beautiful and I loved it it was so fun to create and kind of come up with all these little different elements here and I've held on to this little house for quite some time and had no idea what I was going to do with it and I really felt like this ended up being such a lovely piece and how cute cute for all of Easter and all of spring to have this sit out. What do you guys think of this one? Do you like it? This is such a fun project and you just use one of these planks from Dollar Tree, one of these signs, and you just cut them down to be about three inches a piece. And depending on the length of your sign, the one that I got, I was able to get six of these little pieces per one that I cut. So I'm just showing you that you just spray, if you want the paper off, you just spray a little bit of water on there and you just kind of work with it. I had to use a putty knife to scrape it a little bit to help get that cleared off. You can see my other two up in the corner there. That was from a separate sign and the uh, design peeled off, but it left a little bit of residue behind. That's fine because I'm going to cover them with a design. Now I have used these uh, prints right here in an Easter banner that I made and I love that banner so much and I think these designs are so beautiful and it's so fun to be able to take some images that maybe you purchased and rather than just have a one use for them, now I have another Easter DIY that I can tie in with that. So I'm just gonna be like a really messy coat on the edge of these, just a dry kind of brush, just sparse, just so it looks like these are just old pieces of scrap painted wood or something that you've had around. I do really like the feel of the, um, kind of painted edges here, the really sparsely painted edges. I think that really does uh, look nice, but you can just leave them the plain color that is on there um, as you know, just make sure all the sides are cohesive there. So just really quickly, I go through on all of these pieces and I do this before I put the paper on. Now this is printed on cardstock and I printed this using my inkjet printer. Um, and you, so you, anybody can do this if you have an inkjet printer at home. And I love using this purple Elmer school glue for these projects. If you're a fan of Mod Podge and that works for you, definitely do that because that would also work. So I give a really good coat of the glue to the block there and then I just place this down and I'm gonna use my brayer to make sure that I get a really good bond. Now I made sure to print out two of each of these designs so that way I could have one for the front and one for the back. Now you could easily take these and make them with one design on the front and then have something like this is Easter. You could put summer on the other side or spring or 4th of July, whatever you wanted to do. That way you could flip these around if you had them on a tiered tray and use them for multiple times rather than setting them away, especially if they were like on a shelf somewhere um, that you were using just in your decor because they're so perfect as a little shelf sitter. Then you could just flip it around for the next season or something like that. So they're, they're very versatile and this is a 
DIY that you can use for like any season, any time, any holiday. It's so fun to do and have, have these here. So one thing you do want to make sure when you're doing them on the front and on the back is you just want to make sure that you glue them uh, so they're both the same direction. And I mean that if you were to see it from the back side, that it's not upside down. I might be speaking from experience here <laughs> and have glued one. So I'm just showing you, I'm double checking that one going, oh good, I got it the right direction. But again, the same process for all of these. It's just a little bit of glue. You're gonna place your picture down, make sure it's the correct direction. And then I do always just make sure to use my brayer just to get a really good uh, bond there. I feel like that just works really well. But if you have something else that you like to use, uh, go ahead and do that. One thing that I like to do on the edge is I just take my fingernail file and I sand the edge and you just want to make sure you sand in the direction that is not peeling your paper up. And so each side you'll use that in a downward motion. This is going to give you that nice, crisp, clean edge. If you have another way to do this that you like to get your edges done, perfect. But I really love using that fingernail file. It really does give you that. It looks like it's customized. Plus around the corners of the paper, I like to sand just a little bit. And that way you get a nice little rustic edge to it. I'm just using a little bit of Waverly's antiquing wax right here and I am just taking my um, just like a baby wipe or paper towel or something and I'm just rubbing this onto the edge the edge of that paper where you sanded that will soak that up really well and give this a nice finished look this is totally optional however I feel like it does finish this project off very nicely and make it look a little bit more like it's not just paper onto a block but I think these turned out so beautiful. I did a bunch of different designs of these to have, especially if you are somebody who crafts to sell these little blocks here. I mean, you paid a dollar for the little sign at Dollar Tree that you could easily turn around and sell all of the ones that you get on your block. Maybe if you sold them in a set, you could sell it for like 15 to $20. I mean, that is a great return on your money there. But I just think they're a perfect little item to have just as a decor piece. What did you guys think of these? Did you like them? This piece is really simple and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to create and it's really, really pretty. And I just have these pieces from Dollar Tree. So I'm showing you five pieces here. If you want to make a base out of like this leftover piece right here, it's, that's totally optional. I just wanted to keep this under that $5 price point. And now that it's a dollar twenty-five, not a dollar, we're working with four items, <laughs> not five. So I have two of the square pieces and two of the like picket fence or house looking pieces. These came from the crafter square section at Dollar Tree. They have them in this finish and there's also like a white finish. You can also paint it to be any color that you would like. I'm going to leave mine this natural color today. Now I'm just taking my heat tool to help heat up the adhesive on the back of these price stickers that are on here, the little barcode stickers. It's just an easy way to remove these, uh, to use like your little putty knife there or your fingernail and get under there and then just be careful not to burn your fingers because I've done that a time or two. And so, but you're just heating that up and it just peels right off and it leaves very minimal um, adhesive on there. If it does leave a little bit of the adhesive or you just want to kind of blend that in a little bit more, just run a little emery board over it or sanding, you know, some sandpaper to kind of help get that off and remove that. And it just kind of helps it so there's no residue left behind. Behind. Now I'm taking the two, we're just going to call them a house piece, even though they're kind of like a picket fence, or I think they're supposed to be kind of like a house, but we're taking the two house pieces and we're going to place them against the side pieces here. You want your side pieces to be on the outside. See how I slip this piece on the inside there? Because you don't want any rough edges to show when you're looking at this head on if you're looking at it from the a house facing you. Now I'm just using some E6000 glue. I feel like this works a little bit better than hot glue, but like some Gorilla glue would work great. Some of the Dollar Tree super glue would work great. Uh, I just like the gel consistency of the E6000 here to make sure that I'm getting a good bond. But any type of like adhesive that you're used to using. So I put that on all three sides and then I'm just going to set that off to the side there and then put some glue on my other one so I can work fairly quickly once I have this done. This is why I don't think hot glue would work the best because I feel like it would break down over time and I feel like sometimes if it dries a little bit it gets a little clumpy and I don't want that happening with this. I want this to look as clean and precise as I can. 
Now I'm just going to, now I realized here quickly that I placed the outside of this piece on the inside. So when you're doing this and putting it together, just make sure you have all of the outside pieces that have that kind of planked wood look on the outside. And you can do this with any wood pieces. I mean, say you had like a couple pieces of picket fence or some scrap wood in your garage, you could definitely cut these down and make this. You wouldn't have to use uh, anything from Dollar Tree. If you already had some scrap wood, it would be a free project for you to make. So I'm just fitting these together very nicely here, making sure that I line all of the edges up. You do have a little bit of movement with that E6000 that you can kind of scoot any of the pieces around as you need. Now I love these clamps. These are some of my favorite clamps. I have them in a couple of different sizes and it really helps to get that pressure and leave that on until that E6000 dries. And then this is going to be a pretty permanent fixture here. So I'm just going to line the sides up on this side now and I'm going to place another one of these clamps. And I'm just making sure that the sides line up the best because I want this to look, I mean, if you decide you're gonna sell these or anything like that, you definitely want the most professional look. So just take your time and make sure uh, that everything looks really nice and clean there. And so then I just squeeze this other set of clamps on here and I leave this overnight to dry. And you can kind of see here, I need to kind of scoot that in a little bit more, push it down, make sure that's got a really even, you have a little bit, like I said with that E6000, a little bit of movement to do that. And then these clamps just squeeze on here to have that really nice firm tight. And again, I just leave this overnight, give it one last little squeeze there so it can dry completely. So the next day I come back and I'm going to remove these clamps and there's a little trigger on them that you just kind of pull and that releases the tension. They're very easily to operate and then they just slide off. I just pick these up like at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can order them on Amazon. They're pretty easy to find any type of home decor store or not home decor store, but home improvement store. Now just showing you how sturdy this box is. It is not going anywhere. That E6000 worked great to give this the uh, bond that it needed. I'm going to go over this with a little bit of a fingernail file. You guys know me, you know, I love to distress things. So whether you paint this or whether you distress it, leave it as it is. Anyway, it's going to be beautiful. This has a little bit of grooves in it to kind of have it look like planks of wood. So it really does kind of help those pop when you sand around them. You can kind of see, I'll show you. I just think it looks really nice and kind of has a good rustic touch. If you were to sell these, you could do several different finishes, see which sold best for you. But I'll just repeat that same process around the entire piece. Now I'm just going to stick any plant that you've got at home or any type of greenery or anything like that. This is just like a little planter box for you. And so it's going to be really cute and really nice. However, I have this piece of rope. I had some extra rope lying around from another project. I'm just going to spray it with some water and kind of pull it taut and then let it dry flat so I can get that little kink that was in there out of it. Now you don't have to do the rope. This is totally optional. It, it, don't go out and buy it. It's going to take you over that $5 budget. But if you happen to have some laying around your house or in your garage or something, you just need maybe like not even quite a foot like 10 inches maybe of it and I just tied it in a knot on either end I'm going to place this in here and glue it down with some hot glue and I'm going to glue it onto either side on the inside and then to have this hold in place until that glue dries I just use a couple of my little Dollar Tree clamps I love these things do you guys use these in your crafting they come in a couple different sizes and I feel like I use them all the time but that's just going to help those that rope stay in place and get a good bond there now you're not going to be carrying this by the rope however if you were to sell this somebody might think like oh I can carry this by the rope and you don't want it coming off this the glue does give a really good bond but I do go in with my staple gun and I just give it a staple on each side just make sure your staples are deep enough to go through the rope and the wood there um, you could even look how cute this looks with the plant in there you could even drill like a hole um, like on either side like right here you could draw drill a hole on either side and have the rope come through and tie on the knot on the outside or the inside that would be really cute but look at how beautiful this is it was a very simple project it did not take much time at all and I think for the impact and the size of this piece for being less than five dollars is great and of course if you were to sell these you wouldn't have to put a plant in them you could display it with a plant and show because a lot of people a lot of us especially crafters have a lot of greenery laying around our house that you could just stick in here but for different seasons to tuck into on a shelf I think this is just beautiful what do you guys think of this piece do you like this one I've been holding on to this sign since Christmas time. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby and I believe it was even part of like their 50% off Christmas. So it was just a few dollars for this sign. And then this cute little bunny and carrot sign came from Dollar Tree this year. And this was the first year I had ever seen these signs. There's two different versions of it. One with a white bunny and then one with the brown bunny. And I thought with this white sign, the brown bunny would pop a little bit more. And uh, the white bunny, I think, says like hippity hoppity or something. And this one says happy Easter. But they're really cute. If you find and pick them up, 
up because I think there's so many fun different DIYs that you could do with them. But I just thought instead of having it hang the way that it came from Dollar Tree, adding it to a different sign would kind of elevate it, make a little, make it look like a little bit more like a statement piece, something that was a little bit more high end. And so as I'm laying this out on the sign here, I'm realizing that I really don't like his bow that he has on there. And so his little bow tie. So I'm going to take that off. It came off very easily while I was at it. The little uh, twine bow and the carrot was a little dilapidated. So I took it off as well. And then I have these little uh, ribbon rosette things here and so i thought they might be kind of cute on there uh when i opened them up and placed them on here and i think i just got these in the wedding section that you can see that they were on clearance there um but i was like well do i want two of them or one or maybe i make it like a mrs bunny and place it up by the ears like a little bow but i was kind of like it's a little plain even though the rosette by itself is very pretty you know it almost looks like it could be like his little cotton tail or something right but i have this orange burlap ribbon here and i thought well this is really cute what if i made a little orange bow tie and then had um, the rosette sitting on top of it so that's what i end up doing i just uh, folded the ribbon together and pinched it in the middle and then i'm just tying it off with a little piece of jute twine that's going to mimic that little bow shape without having to actually tie the bow it's very easy to do and it's very simple and it looks just like a cute little bow there so after i get that tied i'll just cut those little twine tails off and you're not going to see those at all so you can see i'm going to do that right here and then i'll just take some hot glue and i'm just going to glue that little um rosette right in the middle of the bow tie i just think that those look so cute layered together and it kind of just i mean he had that little bow on it the bow was cute so i mean if you wanted to make it super simple you could leave that but doing little things like this to pieces that you get at dollar tree really do um elevate them to a point where they're just um first of all it makes it your personality because you're creating it how you want but it really just takes it to another level and just makes it so fun to create because there's endless possibilities that you can do with these things here now for the carrot i just took some twine and i wrapped it around like two or three of my fingers maybe like 10 times i kind of wanted a little bit of a thicker bow since the bunny has a thicker bow on it and the same thing I just tie it off in the middle just with a knot and then you can leave the tails on this you can cut the tails it's up to you but it just kind of like you can fluff out those little loops of the twine it just makes it look like a really nice thick bow and I really liked how that looked after I get the twine all tied off there I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to put that onto the carrot and now I want to go ahead and get these set down on our sign. So I'm just outlining our little bunny here with the glue so that way all of the edges will be glued down nice and tight. Just make sure you get their feet really well, everything. You just don't want this lifting or peeling up at all. And then I even just kind of go through, put a little line of glue down the middle. You know, just use a whole bunch of glue there just you don't want this bunny going anywhere. And then you just kind of center him up. I'm just centering the feet a little bit. Uh, depending on the size of your sign, you may need to like trim his feet or even just like sand around him a little bit uh, if you need to do that that's fine too uh, you just want to make sure that he's not hanging over any of the edges of the sign now I thought it would be really cute to kind of put the happy and Easter at an angle there, kind of opposite each other so it adds a little bit of uh, character to the sign um, but some people don't love that so if you wanted to do it totally straight that would be fine too I just really kind of like the visual interest that it did kind of makes it look just fun and whimsical on here now I felt like the Easter sign was a little plain since I had the cute bow on the bun and then I had the little twine bow on the carrots so I added just a couple little sprigs of some boxwood on the back a little bit of greenery you'll have to let me know if you like this or not I really went back and forth on it and I kind of decided eventually that well everything else had something added to it so I did it and I kind of like how it adds a little bit of that greenery onto the sign too and then you can see I just glued those on the back so they kind of peek out and then we're just going to do the same process with this just putting some hot glue on the back of it and making sure this is pressed down and when i push these down i hold them for just a little bit so that way i let the glue dry before just like putting it down lifting it up because sometimes that um, the piece can still lift up if you're not letting that glue kind of dry and get that bond but i really do like the look of how they're kind of uh, cattywampus or 
ski wampa so however you want to say it i just thought they looked really cute there now this sign was originally meant to hang this sideways here like this you can see so i'm just taking that rope twine off at the back i'll take the price tag off of it at this point here and you can use your staple removers to remove those staples on the back there and that excess piece of twine so they're not on there especially if you're going to resell this you're going to want to do that and so I just want to make sure that I have the twine in the right position here to hang. So I'm just taking my ruler and this sign was like 10 inches. So I'm just marking the middle and then going out a couple of inches on each side. So that way I know exactly where to staple the rope. That way when it hangs, it's going to hang evenly and not... Um, lean to the side or anything like that so and i just follow the same thing that they did they had three staples in the original one so i just went down and did the same thing so and i do that on both of these sides of the twine i think this sign turned out so dang cute i just love it i love the whimsical feel i love those pops of orange uh i started with a great piece from dollar tree if you find these signs definitely pick them up because there's so many things but i just think that adding it to the background like this just really takes it uh to that high-end level and makes it look like such a statement piece what do you guys think of this I love using tin cans to do DIYs with, and I know that they are very popular and they're very easy to get your hands on a tin can. I mean, we all use different types of fruits and veggies. This is a wider can here. It was like a 28 ounce can. So I thought it would be kind of fun to make a little pocket out of this. Now I just took the label off and I'm just using a rubber mallet. And all I'm gonna do is just pound this down. Now it looks maybe like I'm pounding quite hard. I'm, it's not really, it may take you a minute to do this to kind of bend the shape of that can, especially the larger cans, but just just stick with it and eventually you'll get that bottom completely closed off and then you can kind of just use your hands like I'm doing here to kind of bend and mold that shape of how you want the top of the can to be. Now I'm taking my crocodile here. I love this tool. It's linked down in my description box, but I've also recently seen it at Hobby Lobby. I'm using this to punch a hole in both of the sides of the can because I want to be able to hang this. Now, the cool thing about this crocodile is not only does it punch the holes, but I'm going to put a couple of grommets in either side and that's going to take away because we just cut the tin. There's a potential that it could be sharp or anything. We don't want any edges like that on there. And so I'm just going to place that in both sides and that's going to help it look finished and that way it's going to look like it's got like a professional edge you can kind of see here and then when we uh, have it there it's just not going to slice anybody's hand or anything like that it's going to make it safe so I do that on both sides with this crocodile uh, and it comes with all the grommets and everything in this little kit that I got here I actually use this much more than I ever thought that I would so it really is kind of a cool thing there so now that all the grommets are in place I just decided and you can finish a tin can there's several different ways to do this but in this particular project I'm just going to paint the entire thing white I'm just kind of going for a really nice spring feel something that you could leave out nice and airy kind of a shabby chic type of look to it now I have these little rub-on transfers. They came from Essential Stencils, but don't, I mean, I'll leave a link to them in my description box, but don't feel like you have to have these. Uh, Dollar Tree has rub-on transfers. Most of the craft stores I've started to see things or like even like stickers or anything would work. You can obviously use like a napkin to decoupage on here. You could also do uh, print on tissue paper, make your own stickers. The possibilities are endless. It's just the techniques that I'm showing you here. But I really do love this cute little bird that is on this picture. And that's kind of like a postage stamp vibe it's got going on. And it's really beautiful. So I just scraped, kind of rubbed that with that little stick that I have there. It came with one of the IOD transfers. But even just like a Cricut scraper or one of the ones you can get at Dollar Tree or like a, a gift card or credit card or something like that you just want to pay attention when you're doing it on a tin can that you're uh, conscientious of like the ridges that are in the can and make sure that you uh, rub all of those areas all the little hills and valleys and everything really good now I'm just going to take a brush after I peel the sheet back there the transfer sheet and you can see I'm just pouncing this in because of all those ridges I want to make sure that the design is pushed down into each of those I feel like that makes it look really nice to have all that texture in the design and once I do that I'm just going to burnish it with here with this little piece of plastic the little transfer carrier sheet that was with it and then to seal this you're just going to use some Mod Podge I just put a little bit on here you can do whatever finish you want whether it be matte or satin glossy it doesn't matter you just want to make sure that you seal this in uh, even like a sprayed uh, spray varnish would work fine like a clear coat or something like that 
Now you can do like a wire handle on here. I thought it would be really fun to do a little beaded handle. I thought that would kind of bring another different textural element in. So I'm just taking some dollar store beads here. These came on like a big hoop and this is maybe like a third of the amount of beads that I got with it. Uh, it's a great deal to buy them that way. And I'm just using some twine to tie this onto each of the edges and I'll just tie a knot. So all I did was just stick that twine through the grommet there and then tie it up at the top. You could also just tie a knot in the one end if you wanted to, but I really liked the way that it looked to have that twine kind of come up over the edge. These are so cute to display in several different ways. I'm going to just put some leftover florals that I have here from some other projects, just kind of snipping off some little extras that I have to slip in here. You can definitely put all sorts of different things in here for different seasons and different times of the year. It's so fun to change these up. And you could use this to hang with the little beaded uh, handle there, but you could also use it sitting as a shelf sitter where you have the uh, beads draped down kind of in front would look really cute as well. I think this turned out really beautiful. I really do think it kind of has that nice springy vibe, especially with the type of flowers that you decide to put in it will kind of also dictate the season and the feel that you're going for. But isn't that design so cute? If you guys are interested in these transfers, I will leave a link down in my description box. I am not sponsored or anything. I just happen to really like their um, stencils. And I think once you kind of break down the price of them, they're much cheaper than Dollar Tree and they're very, very nice. But I think this turned out cute. What do you guys think? I picked this darling little yellow bird up at a thrift store and honestly, I don't remember paying $8 for it. It must have been a half off day because I really don't think I would have paid $8. Maybe I did. Anyhow, we're going to make him match my decor because I don't have anything this bright yellow. This is a really bright yellow, even brighter than what it's showing on camera here. And it's so nice to be able to pick up pieces that you love the shape of and be able to change them to match your decor. Of course, it's always convenient if you find the piece that's already your color. And I know somebody's going to comment and say, Say, oh, why did you paint that yellow bird? He was adorable. He is, but it's going to look really weird in my house with just one yellow bird. So I'm just painting him to match the decor. And I do that with just some white chalk paint. And I'm just using the folk art chalk paint here. And I give a very light coat on the first coat, a very light layer, and then just kind of build on that. It takes about three coats to completely get the coverage on this little guy that I need. This little guy had a beautiful finish on him where there was pieces like on the wing and on the beak and on his little tail that had looked really distressed, like almost like the yellow glaze had not gone on those areas. So I was trying originally to sand those areas to have them peek through. The problem is it was very sporadic and I was starting to get that yellow paint to pop through. So it takes me just a minute to figure this out and I keep sanding because I'm like, I just don't know what really to do and I was going to wait and see what it looked like in the end. So stick with me because there's a little process here that I go through to get this to how I like him in the end. But I take some burnt umber, just the cheap little apple barrel uh, acrylic paint that I pick up at Walmart. Uh, or anywhere that sells like acrylic paint, you can find this color. And I just am kind of lightly going over those raised areas. So where all that detail is on his tail and his wing, I'm just going over that with kind of a dry brush, a little heavier. You can see I'll swirl it in the paint and then kind of swirl it off the brush so it's not super heavy. And then I just kind of go over all those. And I'm going to go back over them with some white paint. So I'm not super worried about it being like the way that it looks right now because if you look at it you're going that's hideous <laughs> there's a lot of paint there so just kind of watch and see how I do this and it's kind of a process of going back and forth but it has such lovely detail on here that I really just wanted to have that enhance that and have that show otherwise it's just going to look like a unfinished like ceramic bird and I did not want that so I'm going over lightly, just dry brushing with the white to go over those little raised areas. And you can see it's just going over that brown and it, it covers it, but it still pops through because it's such a light coat, but it just tones it down and makes it have that really rustic look. And I liked the way that it was looking. So I got my brown paintbrush here and I even go over his little face because the details and the eyes were there and I just wanted it all to kind of pop. And you can see I just go right back over that with some white to tone it down. And that way it just makes all of those little raised areas and that detail. Like that's what's so fun about these pieces is to have that pop. Now if you've watched me for any length of time, you, you know that I love to have a piece 
that like looks like you found it in the barn or it's been sitting out for years or it's been like you found it in great grandma's attic or something that is just so aged. That's my style and I love it. But you can kind of see that I just decided to go over the entire bird with this the little bit of brown burnt umber in my brush and go all over. And what's happening is all of the brush strokes, since it's chalk paint, you get lots of those brush strokes in the detail and it's picking up that paint and giving it a lovely texture. Like I thought it looked so pretty. It almost looks like concrete when I'm done with this but I can kind of go over it now. I, I still will go over with my white brush, but you can see I'm just getting the lightest amount of that brown. And you can see, especially right there, that how those brush strokes, that texture, it enhances those and just gives it a nice aged finished look. And so here I'll take my brush and just go all over this again with a white, just to tone it down so it's not overly dark. I just like the way that the layered pieces look on this, or the not layered pieces, but the layered paint looks on this and at this point I'm like okay I really like this I was really kind of unsure at first but I just think he turns out to be such a cute little guy and he's just perfect and it's a neutral color that I can stick out year round and have in my decor I love to have birds out year round I really do love how he turns out. He's got that really natural tone that I can put really anywhere in my home and he's going to fit in and look beautiful. What do you guys think of him? I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree calendar pages and I originally pulled out, this is from Dollar Tree, it's just one of their wood rounds. And I think if I had chosen a different calendar page, I would have been able to get away using this wood round, but I wanted to show you as an option. But look at all of these. This is the locally grown, the farmhouse catalog from this year from Dollar Tree. And though some of those pictures on the back are absolutely darling, you can kind of, I'm just going through here looking at this calendar and some of these pages, they're so pretty and the designs are beautiful. And I mean, we, it's no secret that we all love using some of the Dollar Tree calendar pages because they're so cute and they're so affordable and you can get several projects out of one calendar. But I fell in love with this Hello Spring page here. I think this little lamb on there is darling. And I just love the turquoisey color of the writing, that light, light blue and those flowers. I just think this really does kind of like capture the whole vibe of spring. And I thought it would be really fun. Now you can see here as I'm placing on the wood round, it would have the letters would not have fit very well. And I know the calendar page is a little bit bigger than this. And I feel like if you'd painted it all the same color, you kind of could have uh, made it really kind of blend in together. But I happen to have this piece that I got at Hobby Lobby and I paid like $3 or and change for it. And you can see it's a little bit bigger than the calendar page, which I actually really liked. Now, another option for you is get a couple of the Dollar Tree like square signs and use that and glue them together with some popsicle sticks on the back. So it's all one big one. If you can't find anything like this, like from Hobby Lobby or you don't have anything in your stash. So just use a couple Dollar Tree signs together to do this. Now I'm going to paint this uh, over because I want to cover up this little sign and this is a cute sign the way that it is but again it's not really anything that's my decor uh, and I bought this piece from the clearance section like I do many of my pieces thinking in my mind that okay I'm going to change this to match my decor or I'm going to change this to something I create that I can then sell. You get a nice sturdy piece for very inexpensive and then you know you've paid like $1.25 for 12 different pictures you could use to put on it for, with the calendar pages. So I just use my heat tool to help this dry between each of the layers here. I love love using a heat tool to kind of speed up the process because if you craft it like the rate that I craft at, I feel like time is money. You want to just be creating things and, and being able to dry things quickly is very much uh, something you need. Now I gave this three coats of the paint to cover that design and I'm taking some antiquing wax just on a chip brush here. That's literally what they called. Somebody asked me something about when I say chippy, like what I'm talking about. These literally are called chip brushes. You go into a paint store and ask for a chip or chippy brush. This is the kind of brush they're going to give you. So I'm just lightly putting that in the antiquing wax and then uh, wiping some off on the paper towel. And then I'm just lightly going over. You can see here, I'm just trying to create I'm really not 100% being like, oh, this looks just like wood grain, but that's kind of the effect that I'm going for. But I mean, you can kind of do this if you want or not, it's up to you. I just thought this would help blend that picture in a little bit more. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when I place that together. And I'm literally sitting here trying to calculate, like, do I want to go up or down on these or how straight do I want to go? So I went a little wonky on that one. So it kind of gives it a little wave to it. Just kind of adds a little bit like more of that imperfection that we love so much with farmhouse decor. And then you just want to be careful going over the places you've already gone because you don't want to smear 
this antiquing wax. Now this is Waverly's antique wax. It is their type of antiquing wax that is literally called antique wax. I've had somebody ask me about that recently. Any type of liquid water-based antiquing wax will work for this. So you have what, uh, antiquing wax that can be like a solid wax uh, that you use, or you can use like a liquid antiquing wax. And I'm using the liquid antiquing wax from Waverly, and I love it. But they sell a lot of different brands, or Folk Art sells a brand. Uh, you can buy some on Amazon, your craft stores. Walmart is where I pick this up at. And they do have this back in stock at Walmart. For a long time, they haven't had the Waverly paints there, but they do now. So I'm just letting you guys know that because I get a lot of questions all the time about uh, the antique wax that I use. So you can kind of just see, I know that calendar page is going to be in the middle, but if for some reason you could see through it, I kind of wanted there to be a little bit of like this uh, texture behind it. And so that way it would... Um, it would show through and it would look like it was all one cohesive piece. But when you place this down, you can see how beautiful that edge looks. Now, I when I placed it down, I went, I don't really want this to have that hard square edge on the calendar page. So I decided to kind of rough up the edges like it was a torn design. And I really love how this ends up looking. So you can rough this up in any way that you would like to, or you can just leave it as a square calendar page. I just, you'll see how it looks with um, where I tear this. And I lightly just go, being careful not to tear too crazily. I don't want to rip into the designs or the words or anything. But this also helps to blend in the little hole at the top from the calendar, um, where the little hole where you would hang it on your wall would be. This helps to kind of mask that also, because you'll kind of tear uh, where that hole would be, and so you don't even see that. And now you can see how beautiful that's going to look on this sheet here with that edge. And it's when I do a little bit more antiquing wax on this edge after I glue it down, it looks so beautiful. I love it. So I'm just turning this over. I love to use the Purple Elmer's School Glue. It is the only uh, type of glue stick that I've had long-term success with. And I mean, I've made pieces from several years ago and I've never had them peel up or anything. Mod Podge would work great too. There's several different decoupage techniques, but this is the glue that I love. It's inexpensive. Uh, when you buy it on clearance after school I <laughs> after school time you guys start looking for this in the section because at Walmart it goes down to like 33 cents for each of these big sticks and if you keep them sealed they last for such a long time so I just make sure that every little bit of that is covered with that glue and then I'm going to work from the center out and you can kind of see that I little have a little smudge there that I just made of some glue on there and I'll show you how I take care of that so it does dry clear the purple glue. So that is nice. If you have any seep out from the edges that you miss or something, it dries clear. So you're not even going to see it. So I work my way from the center, pushing out, making sure that there's no wrinkles or bubbles or anything. And that's what's so great about using this kind of glue is I feel like your wrinkles and bubbles really are to a minimum. Now here's that little smudge there. I just take a wet paper towel or a baby wipe. I'm just spraying a little bit of water onto a paper towel and I just kind of gently rub. I know it doesn't look like I'm rubbing very gently, but I felt like when I did this, I was actually rubbing really gently because I don't want to tear the design and it comes right off there now and then you're going to want to seal this with some uh, uh, mod podge on here to make sure that the design seals on there so that way it does give it a layer of protectant here now if some of your edges aren't um, maybe they dried a little bit ahead, like after you put it down or something and they're kind of peeling up a little bit just put a little on the surface like I am there and then just rub that down and again uh, any of that purple glue that is showing will dry clear and then when you put your Mod Podge on this then you're going to have the same finish you're not going to see like a glossy part or like the sheen from where the glue would be. Here's what I'm talking about, about I'm taking a little bit of antiquing wax just on a baby wipe and I'm just going over that torn edge on there and it just kind of helps to show that up a little bit. Might be kind of hard to see from here, but you can see up in the upper right hand corner, it really shows there. And then I'm taking just a little bit of what's left over in that antiquing wax and I'm going over the picture here to kind of add a little bit more vintage look to it. And that's something that's just a matter of I love to do that sort of thing and I really like the finish that it gives so this is a completely optional step here but I just want to show you kind of what it looks like and any texture that's on there really really picks that up so it just gives it a little bit more of a vintage uh, feel like it's just a sign that's been sitting out in the barn for several years that you're pulling out to put out for your spring decor. 
I think this sign is absolutely beautiful. I love how it turned out. I love the piece of it. I do actually really love that trim around that calendar page because that base piece was bigger than it. I really love how that looks. And I feel like this is such a beautiful piece. You could sell these. I've seen actual pieces like this, very similar to this at Vintage Market Days, people selling them for $20. And I mean, it cost me less than $4 to make. And I think this is so beautiful. I wanna know what you guys think of this. Have you tried doing pieces like this with the Dollar Tree calendars? And it doesn't have to be Dollar Tree calendars. Check your thrift store for different calendars. Or if uh, you happen to maybe just keep them from year to year because you buy calendars that you think are cute. Because some of those pictures are beautiful that you wanna keep. And this is a great way to preserve those and use them in your everyday decor. I found this cute little guy at Dollar Tree. He it was actually in the Dollar Tree Plus section, which is new to my Dollar Tree. So I was very excited to find him. Uh, I'm just gonna take his collar off here because I wanna kind of make him a little bit more neutral. And as I was doing this, I noticed there was a little sharp piece underneath that collar. So be careful if you're doing this to always make sure if there is any sharp edges, just to sand them down. I'm just using my fingernail file to do that. Now I wanted him to really have this pattern of this beautiful pressed tin showcased. So to do that, I'm going to paint him white first and you can do whatever colors obviously that would match your decor. I just, you'll see kind of at the end why I wanted him white. But I wanted to take some elephant chalk paint and this is, you could use any color that you wanted to to have this pattern show up, but I really like the look of the gray. So I just put my brush into the paint and then wiped the majority off onto my paper there. So it really was just a true dry brushing that I'm going over. And if you get heavy on any spots and you go, oh, I got a lot of paint there, just wait for that area to dry and go over it with some white paint and kind of start the process over. And I'm just gonna do the front and the back of this cute little guy. And I just, I feel like that embossing really should just be the focal point of this bunny. And when it's painted one solid color, it's so hard to see that. So I really like using the two-tone on here. And I do take it my time and I go around the edge of the bunny here because that's going to make it seem like you would have natural distressing like on the edge of your bunny. And I wanted this to look like it was originally like a tin color that maybe had been painted white and then aged. But you can kind of see up close there how beautiful that pattern looks. Now I'm just taking some raffia here and I'm just tying a little bow around his neck here. And then I'm just gonna trim it down so that way, you know, I didn't really want it lo as long as the bunny, like getting onto the table or surface you were putting it on. But he's cute just like that. But I did pick up these little carrots at Dollar Tree. And um, they're very bright. You can't really see how bright these are on camera. Like they actually kind of look like a normal color. But, <laughs> but I wanted to tone them down. So I'm just taking some pumpkin colored chalk paint and giving them a couple of coats to kind of make them a little more not so fluorescent, which is really kind of what they are. Now I did have someone mention that now is the time to stock up on those little carrots because you can use them like for snowmen in the winter time. So keep that in mind if you're like, oh, they're not my thing for spring. If you like to do snowmen DIYs, have a stash in your Christmas uh, uh, craft stash or whatever. So that way you have some. Now I put just a little bit of hot glue in the middle of the carrot greens and then I just stuck one of the pieces of raffia down there and then I just kind of pushed that together until the glue dried enough to hold. And I'll show you again here, I'm just finding a piece that I feel is the correct length. I really do feel like the white of the bunny makes these carrots kind of show up like that contrasting orange. Um, and so I really like the way it made those pop. Now I didn't have a piece of the raffia short enough that I wanted for the carrot. So I just kind of cut one to the length that I wanted. And I'm just going to separate those carrot greens as you could see there and just a little drop of hot glue. And then you just wanna make sure that you don't overfill it with hot glue or it will come seeping out everywhere. So it really is just a little bit. And you can see, I'm just gonna slide it right onto that piece of raffia that I have. And then just carefully kind of pushing those grains together as the glue dries. So that way you don't wanna seep out, wear finger protectors so you don't burn your fingers if you want to. But that's all there is to this. I just think the simplicity of that raffia bow with those little carrots and that beautiful white with the gray for the embossing. I just think this turned out to be such a stunning piece, something you would definitely see at Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby or something. I think this really elevated it from the just the solid color it was from Dollar Tree and it matches many more styles of decor. So if you were to make these over to sell, it appeals to a lot more buyers. I just think he's so cute. What do you guys think of him? 
This DIY is actually a Pinterest inspired slash dupe DIY. I saw this scrolling through Pinterest uh, last year and thought, oh, this is absolutely beautiful. I love this. It would be fun to try it. And then I saw it again this year as it popped up in my um, Pinterest feed. And I thought, you know what? I'm really going to try this this time. So I'm using a Dollar Tree cloche. And then these three carrots came on a garland from Dollar Tree. Now, the carrots come in the garland like you saw but they also come in a package they have bottle brushed carrots there's so many different options at dollar tree this year as far as carrots go but i just took three off of that garland there was six there now i really wanted to freshen up the greenery i did not particularly care for the raffia that was there it's cute but i just had something a little bit extra this is just um walmart's boxwood and i'm just going to cut it down to kind of be the greenery on the carrot i like the look and feel of this much more than i do the raffia i think it looks a little bit more tame that raffia sometimes tends to get a little out of control there but i just still i mean it still looks like a really cute carrot you can see i just cut it down to size and i'm just using some hot glue and i will just push this down into the end of the carrot it's really easy to switch this out and i do this same thing with all three carrots so that way they all match so i'm not going to show you all three carrots but i just want you to know that it's the same process that i do on all of them now I'm just taking some twine and wrapping it around here. This is a little bit of a thicker twine, but the thin twine that you get at Dollar Tree would work just as well. And I'm just going to tie these three off into a little carrot bundle here. Now I'm going to take some hot glue and put a little strip down in the center of all three of these carrots. And then I have another length of twine here that I'm going to place down in the center. And that's going to give me something to use to tie my carrots up with. Uh, and you'll kind of see what I mean by what I'm going to do with this here in just a moment. So you just need the um, twine to come straight up out of the carrots. Now I just took a tag, just a normal tag, and it was way too big for the size of these carrots. So just with my scissors, I cut it down. Then I kind of wrinkled it up to make it look aged and tattered. That's just a matter of personal preference. So if you like that, great. If not, do it a different way. <laughs> but I just am taking some of my distressing ink or antiquing ink here. And I'm just using a little bit of like the yellowy color on it first. And then just a darker color over the wrinkles to kind of give it or the little creases really gives a fun aged look to it. Now these are just some stamps from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut out the letters that I need. I'm going to spell bunny bait on the little tag here. And so I'm just, I will be using a couple of the letters a few times, you know, like a couple of the N's and the B's and everything. But what I do is I do the letters one at a time because this way I can space them out exactly how I want them. I got this little clear stamping block from Dollar Tree and it's great to do this. Now on Amazon, they have some like click stamps, which is the whole alphabet and they all click together in the words that you need. And I, every time I use these stamps, I think I'm really going to invest in those, I think, because these are very tedious. They're the right price point and they get the job done, but they do not store well. And it is very hard to tell what the letters are because they're clear. <laughs> and so they're not my most favorite, but they got the job done. So now what I'm going to do is use the tip of my hot glue gun to put into the center point of the top of this cloche. And there's already like a little mark there for the top of the cloche there. So it's easy to kind of get the center. And I just push that down to melt that plastic away. And I'm just kind of reaching up into the center of that cloche and can tell that it's not all the way through yet. So I'll just place that center back in. And of course, you know, this is all heated up. And so it, it does go fairly quickly to get this done it's pretty simple here and then that little piece just came right out so now I have a hole in the top of my cloche and that's why you'll want a plastic cloche to be able to do this because this is not going to work with glass so I just put some twine or not twine but I on my twine I put some painters tape and then I just fed that through the top of the hole there I did have to use my tweezers to make sure it got through the hole because it was a little bit thicker I did tie my little bunny bait sign on there, but I didn't like the way that it was falling. I wanted you to be able to read that from inside the cloche. So I just put a little dot of hot glue on the back side of that to make sure that it faced the correct direction. And now I'm just going to tie off my twine here. I want these carrots to look like they're suspended in here. And so you just wanna tie them up where the greens aren't so smashed against the top, but you do have a little bit of space underneath the carrots, kind of like they're floating in there. They're 
tied suspended in there. And then I cut off my twine and I have this little finial. You can buy these in a pack uh, at the wood craft section at Hobby Lobby. I've seen them at Joann's. Um, and I did stain it with just some antiquing wax, but you could paint it a color if you wanted to, to match the base of the cloche. Put a little hot glue inside of that and then I'm just going to press the knot of my twine up into that so that it hides the knot there. I've also seen the one on Pinterest had like a wooden bead that they had threaded the twine through and had the knot of the twine on the top of that so that would be really cute as well. I just thought it would be fun to use this little finial that I had. And now on the base of the cloche, um, I, it looked a little bare in there with just the base, but it would be fine. You could definitely leave it, but I have this Spanish moss and I just grabbed just the littlest amount. I didn't want it to be, this stuff can kind of quickly take over in a project because it's so like unruly. <laughs> so I just am taking a little bit here and just kind of smushing that down into the glue. And then I'll give it a little bit of a trim here to make sure that there's not, it's not so unruly there and then just make sure it's nice and tidy. And then I will just slide my cloche onto there and twist that back on. And I just think this makes the cutest little Easter decor, just this little bunny bait, the little carrots kind of hidden in there, you know, maybe the bunny can see the carrots and not realize they're under the cloche. And I don't know, I just thought it was really a cute idea and I really thought it was fun. I wish I could take credit for it. Unfortunately, I didn't, but I just saw it on Pinterest and thought that's something I think I could try and do. But what do you guys think of it? I think this ended up really cute and what a cute little shelf sitter or even a tiered tray decor item. I almost didn't put this DIY in and you'll see why in just a moment, but I thought I would show you uh, how you can take something that maybe you really don't like or you mess up and how you can kind of embrace it and make it look okay. So this is just a little cutting board. They sell them at Hobby Lobby year round. I picked this up from like 2023's spring line. I buy them when they're like half off or even 70% off. So you're only paying a couple of dollars for them. And they're so fun to use in tiered tray decor and different, uh, things like um, just to have like in a shelf in a kitchen or something but I have these rub on transfers these came from essential stencils and they're beautiful transfers and I'm so you guys I kind of really botched this uh, transfer here and I'm so sad about it because it is such a beautiful transfer and you'll see exactly what I mean here so right now I'm just picking the side of the cutting board that I want and there's this little like almost chip in there like this little crack and I loved the way that looked so I made that in the front and on these just work like any rub on transfers that you've seen before. They're a little bit sticky on the back there. So you don't want to like touch your finger on there and peel it up, but you want to center it on your design where you're putting it or your surface where you're putting it. And you can see, I'm just going to center this and then you just kind of rub it all the way down to kind of make it stick. So that way you can start to transfer it and watch what happens here. Like the first, like the first swipe that I do of doing this, it bent the paper back and I, peeled or like ripped my transfer so I literally sat there and maybe cried a couple minutes over it not really but maybe I did <laughs> but I decided I'm gonna keep going and just see what it looks like maybe I can make it look like really distressed or something which is what I end up doing because sometimes when this happens I mean there was no coming back from that I just had to embrace it or throw it away and so I thought well let's just see what happens and it does end up looking pretty cute uh, is it perfect no do I wish this hadn't happened yes but it's okay. I mean, it's fine and it looks okay. So I'm just rubbing the back of the transfer on it, the paper to kind of help it uh, bur burnish that onto the wood. And then I take my fingernail file and I'm really going to rough this up because I'm trying to make this look now like it's something that's been sitting around in grandma's kitchen for years or something. And that design has just faded or chipped over time. And so you can see that I get pretty heavy handed with the way that I'm sanding because that's a pretty big botch up at the top there that I did. I still look at it and it makes me really mad and, and sad, but I mean, it ends up cute. You'll have to let me know if you guys have ever done this with the rub on transfers and uh, what you did about it or if you just kind of embraced it, but I just kept sanding it and I was like, well, it looks, it looks pretty good. I mean, these actually age pretty well. Like you can age them and make them look distressed really good. Like it's just an old label that had been sitting on this little cutting board for decades. So, so it's kind of fun that, you know, you can take something that you've ruined like this and still make it look, look all right and intentional, right? Because we all know that was definitely not intentional. <laughs> 
So again, after I sanded, it kind of had a little bit of a sticky feeling to it because that adhesive on the back. So I just rubbed it down with that uh, transfer paper that it came on it again. And then I sprayed it with a little bit of water to kind of get all of the little dust particles and stuff up there and just gently wipe that off. I was very careful going over this design because that's all I needed was the water to start to peel that up. Now you can go over this with some decoupage. Um, you can do some like food safe decoupage. You can do hard coat, satin, whatever kind that you want to on there I um, I just left it because I'm not going to be using it for any type of like a coaster or anything like that it's probably just gonna go on a tiered tray that I'm gonna put together or just like in my shelf on my kitchen just a fun cute little thing these are also really fun gifts to tie on to like like if you're giving at christmas time or mother's day or something or a birthday present or just a gift for a friend these are kind of fun to tie on to something a little extra you know how sometimes people will tie like little teeny whisks on things or some cookie cutters like these little cutting boards are perfect to have for those just to add just a little something especially if you personalize it maybe you wouldn't give this one out with what i did <laughs> But, but you get the gist, you get the idea. Now I tied some jute twine on here, some thick on there to kind of make it look like it's what it would hang from. And if you spray this with some water and stretch it out and let that dry, it's gonna take all of that like curl or kink that's in there out of that jute twine. And look, I mean, this looks really beautiful. Again, is it perfect? No. Do I wish this hadn't have happened? Absolutely. But I think I took something that was maybe destined for the trash after that moment and made it look intentional and look pretty. And I'm sure that in somebody's rustic kitchen, I mean, my kitchen has some pretty rustic things in it. It's going to look beautiful. I would love to know what you guys think of this. Would you have just scrapped it or would you have kept going on? I think this is the cutest sign from Dollar Tree. If you watched my haul video a couple weeks ago, you'll remember this sign and I loved it and I wanted to find something to do with it to keep it as close to original state as I could because it was so cute. So I'm going to make a wreath with it. And I'm just taking a wreath form and this is just a garland. You can pick these up like at any craft store. I pick them up when they're like 40 or 50% off. I actually used some of the end of it there for my niece's bridal shower. I tore some little sprigs off to kind of use to tuck in like on our serving table. So you don't need, I don't end up using like everything I have here, but it just kind of depends on how full you want your wreath to be. So I'm just placing this around the form and I'm going to use some zip ties on the outer ring of the wreath form. And I'll just put that through the center of the vine or the garland there. And I'll just zip tie those together. You could use some floral wire if you wanted. I really just like the security of the zip ties. They're easy to use. Um, I don't know, sometimes the wire starts to hurt my hands after a while when I use it. And so that's kind of why I like to use the zip ties. So it's just a matter of personal preference, but I do pick these zip ties up at Dollar Tree. At my Dollar Tree, they're in the automotive section. So if you're looking for those, that's kind of the aisle that they're down, um, down by kind of like, it's like hardware and automotive, I guess. So check there. Then I'm just going, once I get that outer ring all done, I just snip these off. Scissors will work. They're a little thick, these bigger ones for some scissors if you don't want to damage those. So I'm just using my little snippers there. Now it really kind of looks sad at this point. So <laughs> don't worry, it looks okay in the end. I promise you, I absolutely love how this turns out. So I'm just kind of fluffing out um, the garland here and seeing where I need to add some more zip ties to because you, you've you got those other rings you can see on that form there. And so you'll, you're gonna zip tie some more down here. So I'm just getting all going in that same direction and kind of getting a general idea. And I'm going to place the sign in the middle and you can see, I mean, look how cute it's starting to look, you guys. See, I told you it was gonna look cute. <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful in the end, I promise. So I'm just kind of deciding where I need to go next with um, the zip ties here. And so I move in one ring. So it's the second to outer ring. That's going to be where all I'm going to place all around because the sign is gonna cover the next two areas of the rings. So everywhere it looks like you can pull that vine to that second ring I just put a little zip tie and I'm just using a smaller zip tie honestly I probably could have used small zip ties for the whole thing I just didn't have enough so that's why I used the bigger ones on the outer ring and then after I go all the way around and can see that it's all adhered to that wreath form I'm going to put my sign in and I'm just going to pull all of that greenery up around the wreath because you don't want to have any of it tucked behind and you can see here it's got these little holes up at the top of the sign where the hanging tag was and so I'm going to use those 
to help get this onto the sign. So I'm just, or onto the wreath form. So I'm just putting some zip ties through and I will just tighten those in the back and I do it on either side. And you can see, I just snip those off there just with some wire cutters. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll cover those up and I'll show you kind of how I do that. But this is gonna give that security. Obviously you want this sign adhered to this wreath form so it's not going to go anywhere or blow anywhere. You don't wanna to go to all the trouble of making this wreath and then have it all blow apart. So you just wanna make sure that it's really secure here. Now, when I flip this over, I kind of realized that the bottom of it, you know, obviously there's no holes or anything in the bottom of it, but I really want to have it zip tied down also. And so I'm going to pull out here in just a second, my crocodile. I love this tool. I use it for a lot of things. It is a little bit pricey. Um, I mean, around like the 25 or $35 range. I can't remember exactly, but definitely worth the investment if you think you're gonna use it a lot. Uh, it does grommets and things like that is what it's technically used for, but it is perfect for these Dollar Tree signs. You can kind of see here, I'm gonna stick this in and it just punches a hole so easy in it. And it's a nice size hole. Uh, you don't have to use like an actual hole punch and sit there. Um, sometimes those hole punches when you use them on things like this they just don't work well so it is a great tool I'll leave a link to the one on Amazon um but I did see them at Hobby Lobby last time I was there so I think they're starting to be found more like in the scrapbook section of your craft stores so I'm going to zip tie this part of the sign also and that's just going to make sure that the top and the bottom the sign is well secured Now to make sure that these little zip ties are covered, I'm just putting a little dot of glue and I'm just going to press down some of the leaves or the little um, branches of this little greenery here. You'll still be able to see the welcome, but it will cover those. Uh, and that way it makes it, so that way you're not gonna see like those blaring white zip ties there. I mean, you could paint them, you could add, I mean, whatever you wanna do, but this is what worked for, for me. Now I have these picks of carrots. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby and I thought they were so cute. And I originally was just gonna take a couple of the carrots and put all the way around the wreath, which would be adorable too. But I thought it would be fun to kind of make a little showcase swag down here at the bottom of it. So I'm just taking two of these picks and just putting them, as you can see, crossed over so they meet in the middle. And then it has kind of a bunch of carrots on either side. And you can see, I just stuck their um, little stems through. I'm gonna zip tie that right in the middle so it's going to secure them. And then their little stems, you can wrap those kind of and tuck them into the wires on the wreath form to help them stay put as well. So now I'm gonna take some carrots off of this other uh, pick that I have here. And so that way I can, and I actually cut all of the flowers and everything off this pick because they were so cute and I thought it would be fun and it would make the wreath look so much more full to have these all the way around it. Now I just kind of place each carrot on here and you just kind of play around and see how you want them, if you want them every which way. As I get this one in there, I decide, no, I want them all kind of facing like the same way as if they were all going in a circle around the wreath there. And since I had three little sprigs of these white flowers, I just stuck one in with each of the carrots there. I just thought that added such a fun little fullness to the wreath and just kind of made it so whimsical and cute. Now, since these came from this stem, like the pick, they have these wires on them. And so I just, rather than zip tying these, I'm just going to wrap those wires very securely around the wreath form. And I do that both with the flowers and the carrots, and that's just gonna make sure they're not going anywhere. You just wanna make sure that they are definitely wrapped around two or three times very securely. I think this is looking so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so for the center of the bottom there, I just got some burlap ribbon and tied it just in a shoestring bow here. I thought that was just perfect. You could embellish this any way you wanted. You could have left it with the raffia there. You could have made a big bow, whatever. I mean, everybody's very particular. I know that sometimes when I make big bows, I get, oh, that bow's way too big. Or if I add a bow at all, oh, you shouldn't add. But do whatever you want in the middle of this. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful and it's gonna be your taste. But I just thought for this, for my house, House. I really like this burlap bow on it and I left the raffia that was on the uh, picks originally on there too so it kind of just adds a little bit more fluffiness and texture and I did just zip tie this bow on here as well so it's not going anywhere and that way it's just gonna be so cute on there. I thought the burlap was just kind of a fun addition with the carrots and gardening because you kind of burlap's just one of those materials that you use every once in a while. So I just thought it all fit together and I just fluffed the bow up here 
And oh my gosh, you guys, like this just took this sign to the next level. Now, as I'm looking at this, there's a few areas that are a little sparse or that maybe need a little extra. So I'm just gonna take the little bits from the garland here that I um, have left over, and I'm just gonna use some zip ties and just zip tie each of those in wherever I feel that it needs a little bit more fullness. So you can just kind of go around and do that. If you don't have any garland left over, see if there's some other type of greenery that you can add or different flowers or something. Use your imagination, just something to kind of help it look not so sparse in some areas and get it as full looking as you want. That's what's gonna make this look nice and expensive and high end is the fact that it's gonna be very full and have all these different textural uh, elements and everything to it. I loved this sign and this wreath so much that the second that I finished this, I immediately took it and placed it on my front door. I mean, never mind the fact that it snowed the next day and I have a spring wreath on my door. It's totally fine. Eventually the snow will stop, but I'm trying to channel that inner spring and you know, I just want spring and nice weather for everyone. But I really think this is such a fun wreath. I really think those carrots pop so cute, especially against the color of my door. And I just love that little truck. Dollar Tree really did a great job with this sign. So hopefully you can find some of these and you can make some fun projects with them too. I picked up this darling little pail of lavender at Hobby Lobby and you can see it was marked down considerably on there. But if you don't have anything like this, you could use a pail from Dollar Tree like this. And I thought it would be really fun to kind of jazz this up just a little bit. And I have these darling little rub on transfers. These came from Essential Stencils, but, and I'll leave their link down in the description box. But if you happen to have some from like Dollar Tree or some IOD or I know Amazon, I'm starting to see the rub on transfers like everywhere, like you can find some. And so whatever you have or can find, even just a little sticker would be really cute also. But I'm just going to take this transfer and put this on this cute little pail here. I just thought this would just add a little extra detail to it, kind of bring it, you know, take it up a notch rather than having it just be the plain. You could even just add a ribbon or something to this if you wanted to, but I really just loved these little vintage, almost like stamps is what these little pictures are. I thought this was just going to really make this so cute. So I'm just centering it as best as I can. Now, if you watched my last video, you saw me use one of these rub-on transfers and I completely botched the project. I feel like I saved it, but it was really one of those like sad moments that I really sat there so frustrated. <laughs> so I'm going to take my time and be very careful with scratching this or rubbing this. You just take anything like a gift card or just like a little uh, craft stick or something and you're going to put pressure to rub and transfer this design, hence rub-on transfer transfer this design onto your surface. Now this little pail has these little ridges in it. So you can see, I'm just going to go in between each of those ridges to make sure that the, the design will transfer there. And I'll show you another trick to do to make sure that you definitely get into all those little ridges here in just a second. But after I get it all rubbed on, you just want to start to peel it up carefully. Because if you notice that there's an area that you're like, ooh, it didn't transfer right here, you can lay that back down as I do here. And I can just kind of go and rub a little bit more in that area to kind of get that transfer to happen a little bit easier. And that way you're not gonna lose any of your design. And then once you peel it all off, it looks like this. Now I'm taking just a clean paintbrush and I'm just going to dab in the middle of those ridges. That's going to help that design transfer and uh, adhere in between those. So that way it gives you a really good um, bonding. Now you can take your plastic and varnish that all over um, if you would like. I'm just going over it with the paintbrush, but then I will also take a little bit of just Mod Podge and you can use any type of Mod Podge finish or anything, but I'm just going to put that on here to seal this so that way it's not going to get like very easily scratched off or anything like that. And so you can see, and I don't go over the whole pail with it, just enough to protect the design. It's up to you what you decide to do there, but you don't need a whole lot of Mod Podge. This is really just to protect that design from uh, like any elements or like anybody scratching or anything like that. This is such a quick project and a quick way to take something that is just kind of basic and make it a little bit more exciting, add a little different element to it. I think this is beautiful. It so reminds me of springtime and Easter time. I think this would be so perfect on a tiered tray, especially to kind of bring in that floral element. And I just love this design on this little postage stamp that's on there. I just think it all blends very well together and is such a beautiful project or beautiful item to have to set into all of your spring and Easter decor. 
Isn't this little basket just the cutest? I picked this up at the thrift store and since it was chicken wire on it, I just thought this will be the perfect little basket to do some eggs. Now I have this Hello Hobby chalk paint that is sage colored and then I'm using some Dixie Belle vintage duck egg and I love this vintage duck egg color. It is my like one of my favorite colors and I love this paint. I have a lot of people ask like is it really worth it to invest in the Dixie Belle paint? Yes, it is. I usually end up doing one maybe two coats. On other brands I have to do three or four coats. So the coverage is very good. Now, this sage right here, I'm like this is really dark. This is not what I remember my sage color looking like. I remember being so much brighter than this. So I did realize later on that I had this folk art sage chalk paint, and this is the paint I thought I was using. Now look at the difference here, you guys. They're both called sage, but they are two very different colors. So this is the color I love. I feel like this color is close to the vintage duck egg, but you know, obviously a little, a little brighter, a little more green tones to it. So if you don't want to invest in the Dixie Belle, um, the folk art sage is a very close kind of match or in the same ballpark. Now I'm just taking some antique wax here and a stencil brush and I'm going to speckle these eggs here. And if you have a toothbrush or like a wire brush or something really stiff bristles on it, that's probably the better route to go. This still did have a little bit stiffer bristles than just a normal brush, but it took a little bit more effort than I would have liked to have gotten the speckles on here. I love the color of these eggs. We've had chickens before that have laid eggs in this kind of colors, and these totally look like eggs we would have gotten from them. Now, while the antique wax was still wet, I came in and I sprayed them with a little bit of water. I'm not sure I would do this again. I was kind of just going for like a vintage. I saw a picture on Pinterest with some eggs that looked like maybe that's what they had done. So I did that just kind of made the little um, specks kind of run and kind of things on there, which is kind of the look I was going for, but it definitely is not necessary. Now I'm taking some moss here to put into the bottom of this cute little basket and Spanish moss would work fine as well. However, as I place this in here and I go to lift this up, I'm like, oh, that moss is getting everywhere because the bottom of this basket is totally open. So I just am cutting some craft uh, paper here and then I'm just kind of using my craft stick here to press it down into the bottom. It's kind of just really just making it stick firm to those um, like the chicken wire. And that way when I put this in, it's not going to come out of the bottom. Now it could possibly still come out of the sides a little bit because those I left open, but the bottom is completely covered with that craft paper. So now that my eggs are dried, I'm just going to arrange them here in this cute little basket. And I have three of one color and two of another. I don't know that six eggs would have fit very comfortably in here. Usually you see eggs in like six or 12, I know. I felt like four was too few though when I was kind of testing this out. I was like, I don't love that. So I went with five and this is how I arranged them. So I probably could have had another one and set on the top there, but I didn't have another blank egg to paint. So I kind of just went with what I had. I did grab a little bit of Spanish moss to tuck in between the eggs to kind of fill in that little like empty gaps there. I really do feel like the Spanish moss looks like a nest and so I felt like it kind of worked with the eggs here. So it's just being tucked in. So totally optional, but it really did just kind of add another textural element to it. Now I thought it would be fun to make a little tag to go on here that said eggs. And so I'm just taking a tag. I buy these just in packages um, like at the craft store, but you could cut them out of paper. You could, you know, make your own, uh, but I'm just, aging it. So I'm just wrinkling it. You can kind of see with my nails, I'm kind of just bending it, going back and forth. I just want to have this have like a very weathered look. Like maybe this egg basket has been used for years and this tag has been on there for years and they just fill it with fresh eggs every day. You guys know I love to make up stories behind my projects. It really kind of helps you decide where you want to take your project. Now this is some aging ink here or distressing ink. Um, I think it's Tim Holtz, I think is um, the brand on it. And I did just buy this at Joann's, but they have a whole line of it um, at Michael's and at Hobby Lobby. Uh, and so it's kind of fun to use. Now you're supposed to use that little dauber to do this, but honestly, I feel like I get a better um, covering with to my liking if I just spread the ink directly onto my surface like I am here. So just know that you do have the option to use that little dauber. It comes with some little like ends that you can take off so you can use the different colors. Now I've got this all like it's tea stained almost and I'm gonna go over with a darker color and you can kind of see that all of those little ridges of the creases that we made, it's going to pick up this darker color and I'm just lightly um, spreading this over the tag 
and that's going to make all of those little wrinkles show up. Now these are from Dollar Tree and I've had these for quite some time and I've never used them, but it's just some rub-on transfers with some different letters and so I thought, well, I've got the whole alphabet here. It'll be kind of fun to try this. So you just do a one letter at a time and then you just kind of scratch it off. I've even seen people use a pencil and they color over the letter with the pencil on the back side, and that transfers it. I'm just using like my little rubbing stick that I have here, like a craft stick would work fine. And then you just want to keep it in place and lift it up. Make sure that you've got your whole thing transferred there before you totally lift it off. And so I just go through and I put the E there and I do two G's and then another S. Make sure when you're doing an alphabet though that you have enough letters. I panicked for a minute going, wait, I need another G, but there is two sets of alphabets on this particular rub-on transfer. I really love this font. I think it really fits in with the vibe that I was going for. Now I didn't have any numbers, but it would, it would have been kind of fun to be able to put like a little price or something on there. I think that would be kind of fun, but just having the eggs on there, I thought was really cute. Now I'm just using a little bit of twine and I'm just gonna tie this onto the handle here. So it just kind of hangs off there, really cute. I just thought this was so fun. I love that vintage color on the paper with those colors of the eggs. To me, that just is such a wonderful combination. The perfect of like vintage feel, I guess. Anyway, look at how beautiful and cute this looks. This truly is something you could leave out year round. I mean, yes, I made it for Easter and I'm calling it an Easter DIY, but honestly, in your kitchen, on a shelf, like in your china hutch or something, this is something that could stay out year round. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Did you guys like how this one turned out? Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. I have been sitting on this birdhouse for the longest time it sat in my stash and you can see I paid like three dollars and change for it. It was on clearance at this little cute farm store in our or not our neighborhood, but in our town. And I love it and have this beautiful lattice work on here. And I have this candlestick that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and it kind of has like this really distressed look to it. And I thought it would be really cute to put on the bottom of the birdhouse and have that birdhouse sit elevated. But all of this lattice work, I want it to match the candlestick. So to do that, I'm just taking my emery board and I'm going to take, it takes me about five to 10 minutes, maybe not even quite that long, but a little bit of time to sand all of these edges and kind of really have this beautiful uh, lattice work on there. I guess, is this lattice work, scroll work? I'm not really sure. But anyway, whatever it is, it's beautiful, but I just wanted it to match that candlestick. So it all looks cohesive together. And so you can kind of see, even on the surface, I'll kind of go on there and sand that paint away. Uh, you could even use, if you didn't want to sand, you could just get like a mineral color of paint and do the same effect with paint. I'm using a combination of hot glue and E6000. This is just going to give you that permanent hold with that E6000 and that hot glue is just going to work as that temporary bonding agent while that E6000 cures. So that way it's going to have that quick hold to it. You don't want to use just hot glue in case you were to place this outside because then if you live in a really hot climate, it can melt the glue. And so you just, just make sure that you use both the E6000 and the hot glue on something like of this size here. Now, as I'm doing this and I'm centering this as best I can, I'm looking here going, okay, there's this rope on top of here. I don't know what to do with it because obviously it's not going to hang anymore. So I just took my pliers and I pulled it out, but then realized immediately like, oh, there's a hole in the top of the birdhouse now. So in my mind, well, I would have used wood filler if I would have had that. So that's probably what I would have suggested, but I took a little wooden bead and 
I put some twine in it um, and I tied a knot at either end of it. So that way the twine fit down into the hole. So I'm just using some glue on that to get that uh, set down in there. And then it's kind of got the little um, knot at the top to kind of finish off the look. I don't know, maybe it's the bird's chimney. I don't know, in my mind it worked. So, uh, but I really do think this turned out so cute. And I've been sitting on this birdhouse. It sat in my stash for almost three years. And I just didn't love the shape of it or how I just want to do something with it and I really think this was the perfect thing to do with it so hopefully you can use this technique with any other birdhouse shapes or things that you find this is so fun because you really could leave this out all year long it's not just a springtime item what do you guys think of this one I picked this little tray up at a garage sale or yard sale and it looks like there's been several different like DIY projects done with it or something. I mean, the back was one color, the top clearly had these painted stripes on it. So we're gonna make it over to be an Easter tray. And I started with giving it a couple coats of a brown paint here. You can do any color you want it as the base. We're gonna use this crackle finish here to make this have a really fun crackle texture to it. And so whatever your base color is, when the cracks appear with your paint, that's what color is going to show through. So you could do, you know, use your imagination. The end is limitless of what you decide to do. Um, but I really liked this brown color and that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I just put a thin coat of this crackle coat all over and I do the inside of my tray and the outside of my tray. And then the trick is to let that dry completely. Let it sit for an hour or two if you can. And then I'm going in with my top coat, which I'm just using a white. And the trick to this is the reaction starts happening very quickly when you start painting. So you wanna be very careful to not go over and disturb the paint that you've already put down because once that reaction starts happening and you go over it, it starts to like slide the paint off. I actually end up doing that here in just a moment. So I'll show you in just a second kind of what I'm talking about. There is a fix for it, um, but it's just kind of annoying to have to go over and do that process. So if you can, just work really quickly with your coats of paint here. You can kind of see I'm getting all the edges here, but just once your paint's down, you're kind of done. You don't go back over that area again. You maybe have like a 10 second window to go back over it, but just try not to do it. But I go all over the entire tray. Now see down here, I had gone over it and that paint just starts to slide off of there. So the reaction had started happening. I went back to kind of touch up a little thing and even with my brush, I'm like, well, what if I do it this way? <laughs> No matter what I do, it just keeps getting worse and worse. It starts to get clumpy, things like that. You can kind of see. So I'm like, dang it, what am I going to do? <laughs> so the best thing to do is stop at this point and just leave it and then um, let it dry completely. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back in with that base color and just go over that area. So you can just see I'm getting that brown and I'm just going to go over that little spot that I kind of smudged up there I'll, and I'll just do the process all over again. So I'll just let that one little spot of the brown paint completely dry once I get that done. And then I'm going to go in with my crackle coat here and go over the top of that just the same as before. And then it blends in perfectly. So, and then I just go in with my coat of paint after the, all these have dried. And then it's just going to, um, and then you just kind of stop and be like, okay, I'm done. I don't, I'm watching this, making myself nervous. Like, why am I painting more on it? But you just want it to kind of be done. It will crackle. I dry it here and you can just see it will blend in perfectly with everything. And that's what is kind of fun about this process is it can be forgiving. It's just annoying when you have to do that. So now today's the day, you guys. You guys have been telling me for months now to try this decoupage technique where I use my little heat press or an iron to, to, to um, get my tissue paper design to adhere. Today's the day we're gonna try it. So I just take a piece of tissue paper and I cut it a little bit larger than my sheet of paper so I can tape it on the back like this. Now that's because I want my design to be printed as big as it can. So I'm wanting the front side of my tissue paper to not have any tape or anything on it. And I'm just showing you with painter's tape, but you don't have to use painter's tape. You can use scotch tape, but we're going to feed this through my printer and print a design on it. And so you just want to make sure that all of your edges are completely taped down, that there's not going to be any flaps because if anything catches in your printer, it's going to tear the design. So just make sure that there's no like loose edges or anything. So it really is necessary to tape it up like that, at least in my experience. So, and then we're left with this nice piece that has a tissue paper on just normal paper. 
and I'm going to feed this through. You just want to make sure you know the orientation of your printer. And I just have a regular inkjet printer. It's not a fancy printer at all. So while that's printing, I'm just taking some Mod Podge and I'm putting this all over my tray and I'm just making sure I do a nice thin coat of it. And then once I get that on, I'm gonna set this aside and let this dry completely. <laughs> This is totally foreign to me because I've never tried this before. So hopefully everything turns out okay. So now you can kind of see that there, there's a few little um, smudges from the printer, but it didn't affect my design. So it's totally fine because we're going to take that out actually. And so I'm just kind of going to take this off and I was able to rip mine or tear mine here, but just be really careful not to tear your design as you're getting this off of your paper there. Um, but you can kind of see how there's a little bit of negative areas there, like the white. So I want this fairly close to my design. So I'm just using a brush with some water on it and then I'll be able to tear that away as you can see here, just very delicately. And this is going to give you kind of a raw edge. So it's going to not be like a um, definite edge that you get with a scissor, like that crisp clean edge like that, because then you'll be able to see that on your surface where if you have a natural edge like this with some like fibers and stuff like this, it blends in so much better to your surface. Now I'm going to place this down and my Mod Podge is completely dry and kind of center this exactly where I want it. My hope is that when I lay this down and put this on that all of those cracks on the paint come through looking like this design was painted on there and it is cracked as well. So I just start using my hand and smoothing it out a little bit and already I can tell, okay, this might work because it's starting to kind of like not really stick down but it definitely is held in place. And so I'm just taking, I have a mini heat press and I bought this on Amazon. I can leave a link in my description box for you, but a regular iron would work too. Um, this is just nice because it's kind of little and can get right into all these little small areas. And I'm just going to go over this. And you guys have all told me that I'm going to love this process. It's going to work so great. And you guys were totally right. This is amazing. Uh, apparently it just heats a little bit of that Mod Podge up and it just sets this design down with no wrinkles, nothing, no tearing. You don't have to worry about using any like cling wrap or anything or saran wrap or plastic wrap, whatever, whatever you guys call it. But it works so nice. And I'm just going over all of the edges just very lightly because I still don't want to tear my design. So I don't know where this is my first time. Maybe I'm being a little too delicate. I don't know. But I'm just going over all of the uh, edges and making sure that it is completely down and flat and smooth. And as you can see right there up close, that crackle is coming through on that design. So it literally looks like this design was painted on there and that crackle came through. That's what is so fun about using tissue paper is because of how thin it is. And I just, I love the way that this looks. Now to seal this, I'm just gonna go over with some Mod Podge, just very carefully. You wanna make sure that your design is completely dry or you run the risk of smearing the ink. So mine had dried for maybe like a half an hour before I did this project. So just keep that in mind as you're doing this. And if you see the ink start to smear, just stop immediately, let it dry and then go back in. But oh my gosh, how beautiful is this? This is gonna be so fun kind of set up against a backsplash in my kitchen or even just like with some cute designs on it, but I just, or a little decor on it, I mean, but look at that crackle coming through that design. Like you cannot even tell that that was not painted on there. I mean, this is such a wonderful looking piece. Do you guys like this process? Um, have you tried the process of decoupage that I just did? I'm totally blown away at how well that works. So thank you to everybody who's commented now for months telling me to try this. Like I'm definitely a fan. This was a really fun project and I love how it turns out. This is just a votive holder from Dollar Tree. And then these are some napkin rings that you can get at Hobby Lobby. These were from last year, springtime 2023, but honestly they have them almost year round, I think in their napkin section there. And just, I'm taking some old styrofoam and then a stick from my yard. And I'm going to make a cute little topiary here. This is gonna be so cute for like a tiered tray. Uh, even if you did like a fairy garden or something indoors. I mean, there's so many different ways that you could use this, but I'm just removing the tags from those napkin rings because we don't need those. And then I went ahead and cut this uh, stick down to be a little bit smaller. If you don't have some sticks in your yard or anything like that, use the end of one of those sponge tool brushes when you're done with it. Stain it up and it works perfectly so you don't have to go hunting for some sticks or if it's a time of year or maybe you don't have a yard that you have anything like that in. There's definitely ways around that, even just a dowel or like a plunger handle, something like that. 
So I went ahead and you saw that I pressed that votive holder down on that styrofoam to kind of make a template there. And I just used my putty knife there to cut this off and then I just get it to size. Now I move this out. I probably should have stuck the glue in there first before I did all this, but it worked out. So you do want that styrofoam glued down there. That is key because you don't want this falling out of this little, this is your like planter pot that the topiary is growing out of. So I just kind of punched a little hole with my stick here and just centered it the best I could. If you like to measure, definitely do that. I just kind of eyeballed it. It's styrofoam. You can kind of bend it in which way you need. But after I kind of poke that down in, I'm just using some hot glue, pretty liberal amount. And then I'm just going to place this down in. Now this project does take a lot of like, okay, now I'm going to sit and hold this until it dries. And so I put some around the outside of the stick here. This is going to give it a little bit more support and then just make sure that that dries thoroughly before you start working with the stick. Now I take another piece of this styrofoam and I just put it in the center of this napkin ring. There's a nice little like literal ring in the center of this that you can kind of push that styrofoam into. And then I just went with my hot glue gun and glued around the edges so that styrofoam was secure in there. So that's what's going to give you because the napkin ring is a lot wider than my stick that I'm putting this on. So you just need something there to kind of give you a little more stability when you put this on. And this is one of the parts that you just want to make sure that that dries completely before you move on to the next step, which right here, I'm just going to push that styrofoam over that stick just very gently. And what's going to happen when you push this down is it's going to push up. Like you'll see here that I'll have that little piece of styrofoam there that I took off from where the hole was, um, where the hole was made there. And then I just gently slide this down and then I'm just going to, there's the little piece of styrofoam right there. <laughs> And then uh, I take my hot glue and do use a, li a liberal amount of hot glue. And I'm going to, I glue around the bottom of this. And then I think I go back in and glue around the top. I just don't want this going anywhere. And you just want to scoot this down your stick to not quite the very bottom. Cause you want to be able to see a little of the trunk of that topiary. And then you just, I just sat and held it like this for uh, maybe like three minutes or something just to let it, that glue dry. And that way you've got a firm hold and that little part of your topiary is not going to go anywhere. Now for the top, it kind of took me a little bit of imagination to think of how I wanted to do this. This is just one of those moss covered styrofoam stones that you get uh, at the craft store. I've got a bag of these at Dollar Tree uh, and I just kind of punched, you can see I'm just using my pencil to pop, like dig out a little bit of a crevice there so I can put that onto my stick. And I thought that would be the best on here because I really just needed it to sit on the top so I could place that other napkin ring. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue there and I will just, I think I burnt myself right there. That's why my hand went away so fast. So be careful when using styrofoam and glue because the hot glue melts the styrofoam. So I'm just uh, holding that there until it dries. And then I'll come back in with some hot glue and I just put like a little ring around the top here. And that's just to glue our top layer of the topiary on. So I'm just going to get that and you can see I'm just separating all of those leaves. So it's very open and it fits right over the top of that. It worked out beautifully to do that. I honestly think you could probably try and do that for both layers. Just cut a hole in the middle of it. it might work even better than the floral foam that I used, but I, ha I didn't think of that until I was doing the top and was like, how am I going to do this? And it worked out perfect. Now this is just a little piece that I took off so I could have one to glue on the top to kind of cover the fact that it, it has like a hole in the middle. So that way it kind of closes the gap there. And then in order to finish this off, and I apologize that the camera angle, you can't see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm putting glue all the way around that styrofoam that's in the votive. And I have some moss, just some floral moss or some reindeer moss. I think I had just a random bag from Hobby Lobby from when I did my fairy gardens last summer. I just took a little bit of that and that's what's going to give you that finished look. You just press that down and that's what's going to finish this off. I mean, you could even do like a little bit of dirt or stones or anything you want in there to give it a finished look, but you just don't want that styrofoam in there. When I finish a project I've used hot glue on, I always like to blast it with my heat tool to melt all of the little webby strings from your hot glue. Keep in mind that these leaves are plastic though, so you can melt those if you leave it there too long. So you're just doing kind of a quick blast to kind of hit each of those little strings from the hot glue. 
But look at how cute this is. I think this turned out so fun and it's darling. Whether you do doll houses, whether you have tiered trays, this is going to look beautiful on a tiered tray or have a cute little shelf you want to stick this on. Maybe you want to glue a couple little like Easter eggs in it and have it be for Easter. I mean, there's so many possibilities. It was just fun to be able to take a stick and some napkin rings and a votive and make this cute little topiary. What do you guys think of this one? If you watched my Easter Dollar Tree haul, you'll know that I picked up a couple of these bunnies and I really wanted to make this over into a primitive looking bunny to have a really kind of aged look. And I've never really done a whole lot of the primitive look, so it was kind of new to me. And I was actually watching Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage and she did one of these last year and she had the brilliant idea to use this distressing ink on the bunny, um, especially this brown. There's a brown bunny and a white bunny and she used it on this brown bunny and I thought that's genius because because it really does age this bunny. Now, if you're not familiar with the primitive look, it is a very aged, old, and like dirty kind of look. So it really does look like this is hundreds of years old is what you're going for. And I know that's not everybody's style, but I really do love the primitive look. I just don't have a lot of it, but I thought it would be really fun to kind of test the waters here. Hopefully I do a good job and you guys think it looks good in the end, but I really just, this was a lot of fun. I mean, this was, even my daughter came down and watched while I was doing this and was like, this is so cute. It's like, she loved it. So, and she's like 15. So she thought it was pretty cool. So anyways, I'm going over with that distressing ink to kind of age this bunny and have it look very old. Now I know some people have used like Mod Podge and cinnamon even to get that dirty look. You can tea dye like the white bunny or coffee dye or something. So however you want, to age it up but I, this distressing ink if you have that worked really well now I'm just taking some scrap fabric that I have and I'm going to make a little apron for our little bunny and I'm just going to fray the edges of the apron there of all this fabric here so it just looks like ratted and tattered and then I cut a long strip here this is going to be like the um, straps of the apron and so you can kind of see down in there, I think I skewed it up here in a second for you guys to see this a little bit better, but this is just going to be, you know, like the front of the apron and those ties go over the shoulder and then tie in the back. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and down, that's just gonna uh, place those straps down here. Now you guys, I have a jar of buttons of all sorts of different buttons, but do you think that I could find that jar? I mean, the primitive look uses like a lot of buttons and a lot of like, age safety pins or thing. I mean, there's a lot of fun little elements to do with it, but I could not find my buttons to save my life. So I scrounged up what buttons I could find. So they may not be as perfect as if I find my jar of buttons somewhere, or apparently I need to be on the lookout for some more buttons to add. Um, then I may change these out, but you'll have to let me know what you think of what I end up using here. The apron when I put on our cute little bunny here was a little bit long, so I just cut that off to about where I wanted it to fall. And then I will just go back in here and just uh, make sure that I um, make that look a little shabby there by peeling out the little strings there. Now this is just a little pocket shape that I cut out of some other scrap fabric here. It kind of matched, it had like little polka dots on it. And I'm just going to hot glue this on to have a little uh, pocket there because we're going to stuff a little something inside of that here in just a moment. So just using my hot glue, I turn this over and place the pocket. But what I do is I end up sticking my fingers in. You'll kind of see here, I push the edges down, but I want to make sure there's enough room for anything that we might want to stuff in the pocket. So I just stick my fingers in and kind of like balloon it out a little bit. So that way um, you make sure that you can fit anything in there that you might want to. So now I'm going in and putting a couple of buttons on where like a natural button would go with that apron. Like maybe that's how that strap is affixed to this. And so I just go on either side and place those little buttons. Again, if I find my jar of buttons, I may go in and replace these were pretty basic buttons that I found, but it was better than nothing. But I also thought it would be really cute to go over the eyes with the buttons as well. That way it kind of looks a little bit more, um, like a traditional what you would see in the primitive look and then to make sure that I get these on okay I'm using my little needle nose pliers there that just helps me go in and get the precision that I want rather than like I mean if I was to do this with my fingers I'd probably drop the button and mess it up or something so that's why I end up using my pliers there which actually worked really well to get these on so you can see I just put that glue down I'm kind of letting it dry a little bit so it's not going to go seeping out everywhere when you place that down 
And then with that needle nose, uh, set of needle nose pliers, you can just place that button right down there. And I just thought that gave her just a cute little look. Now, since I want to make her really kind of girly, I thought I will do a little bow or something here. So this is just another fabric that's kind of um, has the same green tones to it, but it's just a striped fabric here. But I just am using my little exacto knife here to kind of peel out some of those threads, and then I will just pull down on the threads too. And that's how I kind of fray the edges of it. But I just want to make all of the ribbon nice and frayed. And actually, when I get this done, you'll see here I decided I want to age this a little bit too. So I'm just running that ink just over this ribbon front and back and instead of tying a bow What I end up doing is I just tie a singular knot into it And I thought that was really cute because rather than have it be like a traditional bow It might actually be just tied in a knot and that might have been what worked when they were making You know a primitive doll or something like this And so I'm just going to take this and glue this just right next to one of the ears there So it's kind of off-centered and then the little tails of that bow. And if you wanna trim them at all or anything, I mean, do that, but just make sure if you do, that you just fray those edges so you don't have any like new edges on it. So one thing I'm going to do now, and I noticed this on a lot of inspiration pieces that I looked up, is some of the bunnies would have little whiskers. And I thought, well, would I sew them on? How would I get them? So on this particular bunny, that nose just lifts up. There's a little bit of glue from Dollar Tree that's holding it down. But I just lifted it up, and then I took the thinnest twine that I could find, um, that I had even some string or some embroidery thread or something. I just took three pieces of it, and I just put those in the glue, and then pushed the nose back over the top of it to give her some cute little bunny whiskers there. I don't know, a lot of the pieces that I, when I looked at primitive bunnies had those and I thought it really added a fun little look to it. Now I'm just taking a little bit of Dollar Tree greenery here and I thought, well, this is gonna be really cute. Let's just stick some of this little lavender sticking out of her pocket. And then it looked a little bare just to have the one piece there. So I'm just taking off the little greenery that was behind it and I'll stuff that down there. But I mean, how cute would it be if you had like a cute little heart tucked in there or a little chick or something? I mean, there's so many cute things that you could do, but even just the flowers were super fun. Now I wanted to put a little rusty paper clip, not paper clip, but safety pin on here. However, I tried to soak some in vinegar to get that rusty look, but safety pins must take a lot longer than the galvanized metal that I've done before because they were like as shiny as could be when I pulled them out. So I'm just taking some burnt umber from Apple Barrel and I'm just getting this um, pouncing on here. It took two or three coats. You just wanna make sure to let it dry completely in between each coat because it will kind of rub off. But even some Mod Podge and some cinnamon would do the trick. And if I had had some cinnamon, that's probably what I would have done. Either way, it still looks like a little rusty aged paper. Uh, I keep wanting to say paper clip, but it's a safety pin clearly. But I do go in, there was just a little bit of a part of the paint that kind of rubbed off there. So I just went in and touched that up with my brush. But I think she looks so cute. Do you guys think I hit that primitive look or are you thinking that you absolutely hate it? Let me know down in the comments. I just think that she turned out so fun and cute. And you know, my daughter was there with me the whole time making it and she thought it was so cute. And I mean, that makes it worth it right there, right? That when you do something and your kids are like, oh my gosh, she turned out so cute. And she thought it was so fun. So I just... We need to name her guys. So I love it when you guys come up with your fun names. So leave me a name for her down in the comments, but I just think she turned out so dang cute. I am pulling out my calendar from 2023 from Dollar Tree and I'm actually using the November picture, which happens to be carrots. I just feel like this time of year carrots, I don't know, they're so applicable. I mean, you know, you can plant carrots this time of year if it's warm enough in your climate, but I just love this, this design and it just is more spring to me than like a November calendar page. So I'm going to make a cute little sign and so that way I can display that picture and have it. Now this is a sign from Dollar Tree and I'm just gently taking off this sand dollar in case I decide to use it in some nautical DIYs. But these signs right here are the perfect size for the Dollar Tree calendar pages. So when you see them, them, and they don't have them out year round. I feel like it is something more in summer months that they have these signs and I'm just using my putty knife. It looks like I'm really struggling here, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to not break the frame because I wanted the frame to stay in one piece. 
However, I end up not using the frame at all. So <laughs> it didn't really matter. But anyhow, I just take that frame off and then I'm just using some glue here and I'm going to put some craft paper down because I don't want to take the time to have to take off all of that design that's on there. It would, I've done this before and I feel like it takes a long time and it's a lot of effort to get all of that paper off. And sometimes you've used so much water, it can warp the board. So what I'm going to do is place down some craft paper on the glue here and then you'll just kind of see here I just get my brayer and make sure that that is well pressed into that design and then I'm just going to go through and cut off any of the excess edges and also sand them. This way I didn't have to measure the paper a whole ton. I could just kind of glue it, set it down and go. This is giving it a nice crisp clean edge here. Now I'm not going to use this paper covered area as my back. This is, I'm still going to glue my design onto this craft paper. This just gives you a nice smooth surface to work with and also covers up the design that was there. So that way you're not having anything peek through. Uh, so it's very good to do that. And then on the back side of your sign, you still have that nice clean sign back that was there. Now it takes me just a minute to get this centered and put where I want it to. But once I do, I just use my brayer and see if I can get any bubbles or anything out. I don't tend to have a lot of bubbles that appear, but this calendar, these calendar pages are a little thin. So I'm trying this trick. This is not quite exactly what everybody's told me to do with Mod Podge, but I'm using my little heat press here after that glue has set for a minute to kind of see if I can get any bubbles out. There was a few that were in there, not terrible, but I actually did really like using this on there. I feel like maybe it kind of melted the glue and kind of had a little bit of a better bond there. So. I, I can see how this would be beneficial with Mod Podge and I am gonna try this technique coming up very soon in one of my videos. Now I did just paint a little bit where that hole was from the original calendar page there so it just blended right in. And now I'm just looking for where the holes were on the sign so that way I can add a hanger on this. Now you wouldn't have to add a hanger on this. You have it covered up if you wanna have it another way or if you wanna, it was very hard to come up with a way to make a frame around this because it was going to cover the fresh and the carrots. So that is ultimately why I decided not to put the frame back on here is it was going to cover that and I did not like the way that that looked. Now I'm taking a little bit of thicker twine. I just buy this at Walmart and I just put a little painting tape on the edge to give it almost like a needle. So that way it can come through the holes easily. And uh, it's just really nice to have that on there. You can see, I'm just gonna grab my pliers and pull that through. It comes right through. And then I'm going to just tie this off in a couple of knots uh, on the side. I decided to have the knots on the front. I thought that added like a little nice rustic farmhouse touch to it. And so I just do like a double knot on each side here. And then once I do have my knot tied, I will just trim off the edge. And then one thing I always love to do when I get it to this point is I love to take the twine in my fingers and I love to kind of, I don't know, like rub it a little bit. And so just like this here, so that way it kind of has like a frayed look. So it's not like just a fresh cut, like you just cut it and left it. Like it looks like it was actually there for some time and meant to be that way. And then I just do the exact same thing on the other side here. But I mean, for a Dollar Tree calendar page, this is such an easy hack and you have such a beautiful sign to hang. I absolutely love this. I have seen signs using these pages like this at vintage market days that people are asking like $25 for you guys and they're selling them at that price. So definitely something to think about if you're a craft seller, but definitely something to try if you're just wanting some beautiful like pictures in your home or in your decor. These calendar pages are a great way to go. I found these little stack, this little stack of like blocks, not quite like a stack of books, but I got this at the thrift store and I thought it was in really good condition. But if you don't have something like that, one of these little book stacks like this would work from Dollar Tree or even like one of the little crates that you can paint to look like a book stack. You don't have to have this exact piece, but the fundamentals of this idea are, are, are all the same. So you can definitely use this to what pieces you do have. So my original intent was I'm going to sand off all of this cute, I mean, it's a cute saying and everything. It's just not something that doesn't match my home or anything like that. And I wanted to kind of have more 
more of, I just, when you're a creator, you just see things and you just want to make them your own. And so that's kind of where I'm going with this. So I'm just sanding these off and they actually come off really easy. Now, when I sand for projects like this, uh, if you guys have watched me, you know, I love to use fingernail files and emery boards. Uh, I buy mine in bulk on Amazon. I will leave a link in the description box, but guys, any emery board is going to work fine. Pick them up at Dollar Tree if you would like to, um, but they just get into all those nooks and crannies and everything and they work really well. Now, this piece was like one of those magical pieces because when I sanded off the design, the paint job still looked beautiful. And so it was a really easy piece. I didn't even have to end up painting this. However, if I did, I would have just used a light white cream color or something of any kind of chalk paint. And that's how I would have just gotten it. So if you pick up like a book stack or you have something else and need to paint it, just any kind of chalk paint. I went around and sanded the edges uh, to give it a little bit of a rough farmhouse look. And I'm just wiping with a wet paper towel off any dust or anything that might be left. Now I did purchase these stencils from Essential Stencils and I have used some of their stencils before in my videos and I do really like their stuff. This is not sponsored in any way. I was just very impressed with their stencils that I used and they came out with these spring, they have like a spring and Easter line of rub-on transfers and I thought it would be really fun to try these. Now I don't feel like they're quite as expensive as like the IOD transfers. Um, but when you look at all the transfers that you get and kind of divide it by the size of the Dollar Tree transfers, I feel like you're not really that much more. You just have to buy them all at once. So, but any kind of transfers work. Amazon, you can get some rub-on transfers for very inexpensive. Pick ones up at Dollar Tree. I just feel like Dollar Tree hasn't really gotten any new ones in that I've used or seen, uh, at least at my Dollar Tree. And so I thought this was fun because it was something a little bit different. So I'm just going to pick out a couple of these cute little flower stamps. I thought that would be really cute on here. And my original intent was to do three of them across this little stack of blocks. Now I quickly realized once I cut these out, and this is just how you get these off of their little sheets here or separated. You just cut in between them here and I just cut them down to size. But when I go to place this on here, I'm realizing it's a little bit bigger than I thought. It was kind of one of those like, oh, I didn't really calculate very well. So I thought, well, two would be kind of cute on there, but you know, it's just kind of a matter of personal taste, or even if you had like a couple of these blocks or book stacks together, you could probably do one of the bigger transfers on there would be really beautiful. So I get a couple of littler ones on here and I decide I just kind of pick out my favorites or the ones I want on this project and I end up doing three across. Now you could leave them like that, all just kind of in a row like that. I do end up pulling that first one up to the top and moving that other one down to the bottom just to have a little bit of a staggered look for visual interest. But again, you're gonna do what works best with whatever you like and what looks great to your eye. It's so fun as a creator, just kind of wanting to make things your own. Um, and so to use these transfers, you're just going to peel off, it's like a plastic like film on top of the backing. And when you peel off that plastic film, you're going to have your transfer, your design on there. And so it's going to be a teeny bit sticky, like not a lot, but enough that it's going to hold it to your surface. When you place that down, you wanna just make sure it's kind of like one and done, you stick it down. It's very hard to peel it up and move it. It's possible, but you may, you run the risk of tearing your design. So if you can get it set down exactly where you want the first time, that's best. And then I'm just using a little plastic uh, stick here to rub this on a craft stick, like a popsicle stick or wooden craft stick or something works just fine. Uh, like an old gift card, anything like that. Just something that you can use to rub onto the surface here and it will transfer that design. Now, when you peel it, you want to just peel it really carefully. And if any of the design is left on the carrier sheet, just place it right back down and then just kind of rub over it for that to um, come off. You can kind of see here, I put it back down. And if there's a little bit there, I'm going into that little crack right there really good. And then I'm just going to keep slowly peeling it back, making sure that whole design transfers. These are very forgiving, but you just want to go slow in order for it to be forgiving. And um, because I feel like even if when you lay it back down, it doesn't match up 100%, you're still kind of going for that vintage vibe. It still looks fine. So you can just kind of see here, that's beautiful. And then I don't show this uh, right here, but what you take do, and I think I'll show it in a minute here, is you take your plastic uh, cover and you just rub that over the design that you laid down. That helps to kind of burnish it onto the the uh, blocks there and help seal it. And then I do end up going over it with some Mod Podge, but I'm just going to do that exact same process with the others. I work on these two ends here and maybe I should have done the middle one first. I don't know, the spacing ends up being fine, especially where I can have them all 
on there together. I just thought getting those two ends together. And I have people tell me all the time, oh yeah, you start this way. Or some people say, no, you start in the middle and work your way out. It, it worked fine for me. So whatever way works best. Um, when you're doing it to kind of measure, and if you want to get out your like ruler and kind of exactly measure it, definitely do that. So that way you know where everything is going. But I feel like it's farmhouse. If it's a little bit off, it's totally fine. <laughs> but that, that's me, you know, so whatever. Anyhow, so same process here, just kind of rubbing those down and then just gently peeling them back. And um, it's very simple. I feel like this is a fun project. If you have grandkids or kids or somebody that you want to do this with or something, a project like this, this is something that is perfect for them uh, because they're able to do it very simply. It turns out very beautifully, even like a very beginner type crafting project. You have that success rate of, oh my gosh, that was really easy and it's done and it looks beautiful. One trick to do here is use a brush to tap down into the middle of like your separation, like the little cracks right here. Uh, because if the design doesn't push down all the way there, that's one way to kind of tap it down into all those little nooks and crannies and it looks great. And it's one like a really nice trick to do that. Now here's where I'm taking that plastic and I'm rubbing over all of the designs on here. This is just to helping seal them, give them a nice kind of like, you're kind of polishing your design here. Uh, and it's going to uh, be really nice and make sure it's all adhered and there's no like snags or anything uh, poking up. I do go over the top with some Mod Podge, just any kind of Mod Podge, the kind of if you want uh, like a satin finish or a gloss finish, it's up to you. Uh, but this is just going to help seal it, make it a little bit waterproof. If anything, I mean, you definitely don't want to set this outside, but if you, um, if you got anything on it or something like that, you'd be able to wipe it down and that way it would help to seal the design. Now it's beautiful the way that it is, but I love to add a little bit of greenery when I'm doing little block stacks like this. And so I'm just taking from Walmart some of their boxwood and their boxwood is so beautiful and I feel like it has a much more realistic color than uh, say Dollar Trees does and so I really do like theirs. It might be I think for the amount of sprigs you get, it kind of works out to be a little less actually. Um, but like, I, I can't remember if it's a dollar 97 or two 97, but you get like a really big, like stack, like a big stack of it. Um, or not stack of it, like bushel of it. I don't know what you say, but you get a lot of it and it's quite a much more thick than Dollar Trees. So I'm taking, I take three sprigs for each side off of my uh, pick that I have a pick. That's what it's called. <laughs> you, you get a bigger pick of flowers anyhow. And so I take, I put the one on the ends there and then I'm taking two more and stacking on top of it. So it kind of looks like layered. So it's not just all clumped on there. You kind of have a little bit out toward the edge and then it gets kind of thicker as it goes into the middle. And I'm just using a fair amount of hot glue in the center there. I will put a bow on here, but some flowers or something would also look very nice. Something to kind of cover that middle section. You can even put a little bit more boxwood if you could get it to look really nice or anything there. But I just hold that till that glue has a nice good dry feel. Now this is just a bow that I had from some of the Christmas decor that I had that I purchased this year. I believe it was in a package that came from Hobby Lobby and I think there was like six or seven of these bows with some like little clips on them. So I'm just trimming down the edges because it's a little long for this project and then I'm just going to use some hot glue to stick this down in the center uh, and that kind of brings in a little bit of that rustic burlap into there which is really cute with it. I love the contrast between these bur the burlap and that greenery on the picks. So again, it's just a little bit of hot glue that I stick down and then I'm going to hold that bow until it completely dries. Another totally optional idea is if you want to rough up those little designs a little bit more, maybe you want to have them look a little bit more vintage, you can just lightly go over the top of them with your fingernail file. You may want to do this before you put your Mod Podge down, either that or go back and kind of reseal over it with the Mod Podge because you're just kind of like sanding it off at this point. But it kind of has a really nice touch to it to make it look a little bit more roughed up on the actual design. Again, just a total optional, but I thought I would just show this if this is something that you uh, did want to try. I am so pleased and happy with how this piece turns out. I think it's beautiful and I think it's going to be a great addition for like spring decor or even just some farmhouse decor. But the fundamentals of making this piece are the same whether you do it for any season or any style to fit your home. So if you're not specifically looking for something for spring or farmhouse or something, keep this in you the back of your mind to remember for different projects for different seasons because it is so simple to make and look at how beautiful it turns out. And I think these would sell really well at like a boutique or bazaar or something like that. What do you guys think of this? I've been holding on to these ceramic uh, orbs, balls, whatever that I picked up at Dollar Tree a while back and it kind of has beautiful flower 
uh, shape to it. It's just kind of a plain ceramic, so it needs some type of treatment to it, I feel like. And so I'm just using my heat tool and I'm just gonna peel off this sticker here on the bottom there. That heat tool works great to get those off, but it's really pretty and I really thought it would be fun to kind of do um, like a wax detail on it to kind of make all of those little grooves and everything pop and have that detail come out. So I thought that I would paint it this lovely green color. Now, of course, any color that you paint this is going to be beautiful. And when I started this, cause I really was kind of going for just a nice fresh vibe with this. And I thought that this green was really dark, but it does end up okay. So stick with me on this one, because even though it does look kind of dark and, and it ends up being kind of bright and really pretty. So, but any color that you would do this would be beautiful. It does take a couple of coats as you can see here as I'm drying it, there's a little bit of the white peeking through maybe that you're, because it's so porous because it's just kind of like an unfinished ceramic. It just kind of pulls that paint in rather than letting it spread. So it does take a couple of coats on this. So I'm just showing I had to go over it a couple of times just to get the coverage to make sure that you didn't have, it didn't look unfinished in any way and you didn't have any of the, the white peeking through. Now this is just a white wax. Uh, this is uh, folk arts kind. I pick it up at Hobby Lobby. And I'm taking a stencil brush so I can pounce and swirl this in so it gets in all of the grooves. And this is what's going to brighten up this green really well. So I just, as you can see, go around and just swirl it. You can be kind of heavy handed with this if you want uh, you, because it smears and spreads very lovely, very easily all around. So a little does go a long way, but you can be generous. You don't need to be like worried about being too heavy handed because we're going to wipe most of it off. So here I just grabbed a dry paper towel. You could probably use a baby wipe, might even wipe, uh, wipe more of it off. Or if you got your paper towel wet, I just had a dry one and I started wiping it. And I started wiping it from like the top of it down to the bottom and realized if you wipe it in the way of the design here, like I am right there, it wipes off like a lot easier and it's a lot smoother to do. And you just go around and just wipe it off until you get the finish that you want. And you can see all of that beautiful detailing there starts to pop, almost looks like, like mermaid scales or something when it's positioned like this, doesn't it? But it's really nice and you just keep doing this until you get all of the amount that you want off. Now you can see how clean and crisp this is looking. It's starting to show those little details and that embellishment so beautifully. And if you get to this point and you think like I've wiped too, um, it too much, you can put a little bit more wax on. Or if the opposite, like here, I decided I wanted the green to pop a little bit more on those raised areas. So I just took the rest of the green that was left in my brush and I'm just going over some of the areas. And that's just going to enhance that original green color we put on there. It's just gonna enhance that and make that white pop even more. So that's a great detail if you did get a little too heavy handed there's ways to fix it and this is one of them so it's, it's a great tip to use i can't believe that for a dollar 25 and some paint and a little bit of wax i get this beautiful orb to use in my decor you would pay upwards of 10 plus dollars for these if you were to buy them at a store already completed I really love how you can see all of that detail from the wax up close here. I think it turned out really beautiful and that detail is really so fun to see up close like this. This is one of those pieces that is so fun to have and is really a staple because you can use it in tiered trays, anywhere that you need a pop of color. And that's what's so fun is you can paint them different colors and have them for different seasons if you would like. So when you find these at Dollar Tree, grab a couple. This is more of a hack than a DIY, but it's still a lot of fun and it's really cute. So you should definitely give it a try. So I'm just taking a floral arrangement that I already have. This is one I did last spring and I'm just taking it out of the tin that it was in and put it in something a little more Eastery looking. But this is just a plant from Ikea. You could just use something like that or something you have laying around your house, like a little uh, granary or floral arrangement. And we're just gonna kind of give it a little Easter. We're gonna give it some bunny ears here. So this is just a headband from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut up the center her, like on the inside of this headband to kind of peel back this little fur that's on here because we want to get to those ears. Now you could just slip this down in as it is into your plant but I noticed that when I did that the ears kind of seemed far apart and they didn't look the greatest. So once I get the fur removed um, it's just from the headband I'm removing the fur. The ears you just keep the fur intact on those and I cut that in half and then I'm going to overlap and you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to place a little bit of hot glue 
here. And then when you glue these, obviously you're just gonna make sure that your ears are facing the same way and overlapping that center piece there. That's going to move your ears closer together and in a kind of a smaller plant like one of these, it's gonna make it look much tidier and kind of much more like bunny ears, whereas the other one, it looked a little awkward to me. And so that's why I decided to go to this treble. So this is, just know you could stick it in the way it is, but if you want it to look a little bit better, go ahead and do what I'm doing here. Now this is just going to cover up that blank, like not blank, but the little area that I cut. You can see that on the headband. So we're going to put that fur back on and it's just using a little bit of hot glue around the ears and I'm just gonna push this in and I'm going to do the same thing on the back side as well. So I'm just gonna glue underneath to make sure that that fur is all nice and tidy tucked in. This is just covering that area on the headband that we just cut. Now these are work so well because the ears have like these nice little like plastic pieces going up to help them stick upright, which is perfect for um, for this, so that way they're not gonna droop or anything like that. You can see I just turned the ears over and I'm doing the same thing on the back, just using a little bit of hot glue around the base of those ears, and just you just cut a piece of the fur that's gonna be big enough to kind of cover that spot. This is mostly gonna be tucked down in your plant, so you're not going to see it, but just on the off chance anybody does see it, you don't want any of those like cut plastic pieces there or anything. We want it to look as nice as we can. So then again, I'm just going to make sure that all of those edges are glued down here before we go ahead and stick this into the plant. So once this is done, I'm just going to squeeze the uh, edges together here and just kind of to make it a little bit slimmer and you just kind of start maneuvering your plant and everything and sticking this down in right in the center. This is just such a fun little touch to bring something that's kind of Eastery in. And I mean, look at how cute those ears are. Now you can imagine they look kind of far apart as they are right there. So if you were to leave them even further apart as the headband traditionally came, they would be even more far apart. So it just depends maybe on the size of your plant, but I just think this is such a fun way to tuck in a little bit of Easter and bring that fun kind of whimsical look in. I love the little gingham check on these ears. I think this turns out so cute and it's such a fun little hack. I would like to thank you so much for joining me for today's compilation video. I hope that you enjoyed all of these DIYs. If you had a favorite, let me know down in the comments. I always love to hear which ones you guys like the best. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.